You knew the warnings. Every town has a place best ignored. The crumbling cottage with skeletons in the walls. The briar choked cemetery. The circle of scarred trees deep in the woods. The places on the periphery where dark deeds linger. Every town has a beast to avoid. The wolf with the baby's cry. The raggedy man with yellow eyes. The rotting horse dragging victims into the ocean. The monsters who attack when you stray from the path. Every town has a superstition to be obeyed. A path walked only in groups of three. A skull paraded in the winter months. A summer sacrifice made of straw. The rites that keep the darkness at bay. You knew the warnings. And you came anyway. Welcome to Solemn Vale, a lovely place to spend a day or an eternity. I am Tyler, Elder Jekos Online, and I will be your narrator for this series of interlocking terrifying tales. We are Vorpal Tales, and we have a variety of terrifying tales and awesome adventures that we now play every day of the week, twice a day, every day but one. Go to our website, vorpaltales.com, for the calendar, or check out the Twitch channel here. You can also go to our website for social media, links to YouTube, our Discord, and our Patreon. Special thanks to Dirty Vortex Games for supporting us playing this awesome game, along with Roll20. Darren Curtis Music, Ghost Stories Incorporated, Somnium Music, and a little bit myself. Victims of the Weird, tell us of yourself and the bare bones name of your character. We're going to begin with Eric. Oh. I will be playing uh, Henry Bjornson, the dad. And next we're going to Ambrose. Oh my god, I'm not first for once. What is this? <laughs> I've finally forgiven you for that thing. It's a trap. <laughs> uh, what did I do? Anyway, hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they, and you can find me all over the internet is Ann Changeling. And tonight I shall be playing Lambert Bjornsson. Don't call him ne Lammy. <laughs> next, Savannah. We'll see if my potato wants to work because it just had a conniption fit. Hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. And tonight I will be playing um, Mary Jacqueline Bjornsson, the sister of Henry, or Henry, wherever the hell he is on screen. <laughs> Next, Kay. Uh, hi, I'm Kay. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, and tonight I will be playing. Henry Bjornsson Jr. or Hank, the older son. Last but not least, right. Hello, I am Rachel. I'm still on fires pretty much everywhere. And tonight I will be playing Beatrice Betty Bjornsson. I know she didn't pick that name. She married into it. Uh, she will be playing the wife and mom. Excellent. We're still working out some technical details. I'm sending people wrong places. But yes, let us begin talking about Solemn Vale. Also, of course, as usual, Beatrice, you will be our, our uh, uh, note taker. The person who writes everything that happens in the Black Book of the Woods. And Lambert, you will be our recapper when such times arise. Solemn Vale. What is Solemn Vale? Solemn Vale itself is a 1970s farming town in the southwest of England, isolated from the world. A close-knit community giving rise to small-town familiarity and small-town pleasantries where the newest visitors and smallest infractions can become sources of gossip and scandal overnight. It is a land steeped in history where forgotten sex prey to pagan gods in the dark corner of Thatcher's Britain. We will, of course, be modifying the setting somewhat in preparation for the penultimate ending to our a series of interconnected tales where we will be helping playtest The Summer of Weird, the newest release by Dirty Vortex Games. So we will be placing Solemn Vale out of Britain and into the American Midwest. However, we will be keeping the flavor, the themes, and most importantly, the way it feels to be in Solemn Vale. The whole core aspect remains unchanged. We're simply moving its location and placing us into an ambiguous place and time. Imagine a town, if you will, where the cars are all straight out of the 1980s. The high school is from every 90s movies ever, but you still have high-speed internet and cell phones. The year is right now, and the place is right here. A conglomeration of places and times that exists in a forever now. 
Asylum Vale is a narrative-driven storytelling game which explores an abhorrent world of folk horror and the supernatural. Each game is a communal storytelling experience with the players and the narrator becoming ensnared in a tale of mystery and survival. Visitors and inquisitive residents whose eyes have been opened to a festering evil. Guided by me, we will deliver small glimpse, glimpses into the grim underbelly of this strange place in the Midwest and the festering malevolence feeding it. Success is by no means certain as the weird corrupts and destroys all those who confront it. This will be a series of interlocking tales running three to five sessions each with one overarching story. You will die frequently, prepare, and or go mad or become one with the weird. Solemn Veil vale is a state of mind, twisted and macabre, laced with dread and paranoia, and occasionally tinged with dark humor. Or if Big Dad is in your game constantly, it is the darkness in the cave, the shopkeeper's stern glare, the lone, the lone voice urging you forward when every sight, sound, and shiver of your spine tells you to turn back. You knew the warnings. You came anyways. So how does Solemn Vale work? Solemn Vale works with the base system that they have titled the Weird Abacus. It is the underpinning to all of Solemn Vale's stories and the nexus of the weird and the horrible. It is very simple, but allows for a lot of complexity and variety. It's an extremely basic system. The Weird Abacus, and they call it that because you would normally track your character with a series of dots connected to lines, kind of like an abacus. You can create this however you want. I don't have an official character sheet yet because this game is out of Kickstarter but not yet released. You should definitely go back it and we'll drop you some links later around the break time. We'll give them to Ambrose. Uh, so however you can make this work on whatever form of Google Docs or Notepad or whatever you want to use, spreadsheet maybe. Uh, a series of rows, probably from one to uh, six, and then four possible spots on each row. Six across, four down. However you want to rep represent, reference that. Uh, the Weird Abacus uses attribute pools, dice, and a simple bidding mechanic. And that is how the story and the flow of the fiction unfolds. As you become more embroiled in the blood, fear, and witchcraft of Solemn Vale, you risk being caught in the threads of the weird itself, a force of destiny and fate. When faced with threats and challenges, you can draw upon the weird to tilt the odds in your character's favor. But beware, the con consequences of doing so will linger, risking outcomes both fair and foul. To play through a Solemn Vale story using the weird abacus, you'll need six-sided dice, a way to record stats, uh... You will rarely need more than 10 dice ever. If possible, it's useful to have different colors of dice to help to, 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 to differentiate between what are attributes and what is weird, which we'll get to in a minute. And a way to record uh, how your stats manifest in a role-playing fluff fashion. Also, side note, this game can be played entirely without a narrator if you have the core book where all the players just use tables to roll for the weird, and the weird determines how your story goes. But we're using a narrator-based story for the show. So. Um, there are several varieties of story type that Solemn Veil vale is meant to run on. They call them stage rules. So each of our interlocking stories will have its own stage rules. Some will have more than one. These all fit different varieties of full core. The book provides several examples, and of course, the narrator can create their own. Ones we will be using include bloody, which means whenever any of you suffer ability loss to your attributes by failing a challenge, someone else also suffers the same loss. This would represent like Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street. Close the shutters, where you cannot attempt a pressure challenge without taking points from the weird pool. A pressure challenge we'll get to later. But basically, you can't do anything under stress without becoming entrapped by Solemn Veil. Vale. This represents like uh, uh, Suspiria, or help me out here. Eric. What were the other no, sister? Oh, I'm not, um, Midsummer or? Uh... Yes, thank you. Next, you have The Devil's Due, 
where a cult of demon worshippers conduct black sacraments in the woods. Once three sixes in, t- in total have been rolled on any weird roll, the ritual is complete and the fiend is summoned. Uh, only one of us is getting out. A character can only escape if every other character has suffered at least one ability being scratched out, meaning entirely used up. This is Final Girl style horror movie. Prowling Barghest. The black dog is prowling the town looking for prey. The first time anyone rolls a six on any weird roll, the dog appears in the scene and causes horrible complications. And then last but not least, Rolling Fog. The mists are creeping off the moors. The mists present a foreboding challenge that rises by one point each scene. Failing to overcome it results in fear, confusion, or getting lost in the fog. This is what we'll be using for tale one. Switch, uh, switch grass. Only it will be the grass, not the fog in this instance. Hmm. So, our first tale of the four will be using rolling fog, meaning every time we move to a new scene, all difficulties increase by one from the level I give you. No cap. And when you fail, the grass consumes you, separates you, pulls you apart. Creating characters. Now we can make tunes. So, you'll need a concept, which you all have. You are all a family. We have the husband, the wife, the two children, and the once estranged aunt who is made up with her brother. You are heading cross-country, deep across the Midwest, into a remote location to a quaint town to have a nice, relaxing weekend at a bed and breakfast. Now that everyone is getting along again. A good reunion. Uh, The brother and the aunt, of course have been on decently good terms in the sister-in-law for quite a while, but the rest of the family has ostracized the aunt until very recently. Where ultimately, uh, you will move... Uh, your ultimate goal would have been to spend the weekend at this bread and breakfast and ultimately keep heading west until you actually meet with your parents to celebrate Henry and Aunt Mary's father's uh, 62nd birthday. That is the setup when everything goes awry. So, uh, you should definitely work together for group cohesion and definitely create some good connections that are both positive and negative for the awesome drama. Because that's the best part of any good full core movie. Abilities. You have three. You have body, mind, and soul. Those are your attributes. That's it. That's all the end. You have 15 points to spend on them. None can be lower than three. None can be higher than nine. Body deals with the physical challenge of obstruction, pursuit, and threat. For instance, grappling with the furious denizen, shoving a heavy barrier out of the way in a hurry, or running from an angry bull in a field. Mind deals with the mental challenges of logic, pressure, and wits. Mind helps uh, puzzling through a devious cipher, convincing an obstinate denizen to help or quickly spotting a clue in the environment. And soul deals with the spiritual and occult challenges of foreboding, invocation, and taint. Soul is likely to be needed for gathering the courage to overcome fear, grappling with the occult forces of a spell, and resisting the tempting corruption of Solomon Vale's darkest powers. Boost one at the peril of the others. When you are rolling uh, dice in Solemn Vale, you always roll a single d6. And then there's a challenge rating to overcome. You can boost your d6 by spending a point of your attribute to give yourself an additional d6 to your pool, up to however many you want. Once you've spent all your attribute points, it's scratched out. If you have not spent them all and we switch scenes, you have a chance to recover spent points, but only one per scene. So burning your points a powerful way to succeed but a quick way to risk your character you can also buy points from the weird which we'll get to later to get an automatic plus one to a roll those are the only ways your rolls go up from a single d6 challenge ratings go from two to ten so sometimes you have to buy up if you want to succeed so keep that in mind when choosing your final values i will also potentially set base difficulty levels for an individual character based on their base attribute level before you started spending your points. So if your body's nine, I'm going to give you a lower difficulty to jump a hurdle than if your body's a two. Uh, 
spend those points now. 15, you said. Minimum three, maximum nine? Correct. Okay. So I've decided to go with body five, mind four, soul six. Glorious. Uh, I have decided to go with a body eight, mind three, spirit four, or sorry, soul four. Proper Jack. Proper Jack. Spirit, soul, meh. Spirit, soul, similar. Would having a, a low soul mean that you're sort of vapid? Uh, I think a low mind would mean vapid. A va- uh, low soul would mean more weak-willed. Easily oh. scared. The supernatural okay. tends to come for you more than others. <laughs> Bad luck. Um, Rachel, what did you do your spins in? Uh, so I figure she's of like hearty Swedish and Norwegian stock. So she's got a uh, body five. Uh, she's got a mind four. Uh, I might bring that down to three. I don't know. Uh, and like a soul six, because she's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to bring my mind down to three and my soul up to seven, because like, you know, she's a mom. She lives to give to other people. Sure. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the body seven, mind four, and soul four. Like he's just like not there. <laughs> he's tall, lanky. Got a nice dad bod, though. <laughs> dad bod. <laughs> I was leaning towards body six, mind six, soul three, because I kind of envisioned him to be a bit of a chicken, but I don't know. And the only reason body's a six is because he's younger. Right. That makes sense. And a child potentially has a higher soul because you accept everything. Oh. You still have your imagination is a good way to look at that. Maybe I will then switch out body and soul he'll be a nerd birdie so that i switched it to body three mind six soul six i like that okay for a 12 year old so that's all of you yes I believe i heard five rounds we hear what no, we didn't hear. Savannah. I did not hear Savannah's. No, it is. You don't live with me anymore, so therefore I don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we go up to fifteen. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Deep, 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 deep. Yep, you must have min three, max nine. Um, my body is three, my mind is eight, and my soul is whatever's left over. Four. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Also, feel free to move these around later on if you decide you want to, and you hear more of what's going to happen until we start. And then even after the first session, if you decide that it didn't work for me, you can switch them. Next, you pick facets. Facets are uh, two words or phrases or sentences that describe each ability. It's a brief description that adds depth and detail. They don't have to be positive. You could be athletic or quick-witted, but also clumsy and aloof. The fa- facets don't have a mechanical effect. However, uh, I will use them when we have between scene recovery. When you're trying to recover spent ability points, facets will apply. Meaning I will need you to narrate to me why you think you can justify re- making a roll to recover a point from the previous scene based on your personality traits or physical traits. Or something you would do between scenes that fits those facets. So two for each of the three attributes. And then feel free to say these two because you wouldn't, as, as a family, you would know these things about each other.
So these are just like single words? They can be uh, uh, phrases or sentences too. So like the book does athletic, quick, witted, clumsy, and aloof as options. But last time we did this uh, in the one shot for extra life, people came up with some really clever stuff. I'm not, okay. Okay. I'm not Definitely doing that again, okay. Tyler. I'm not doing that again, Tyler. It's not going to be like that was a that was a good storm. I don't know if I can be as as witty as I was last time. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not on cold meds anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> those were really good. Though. Go watch that one, shot people. <laughs> yes, a disaster. It's on our Twitch and our YouTube, and it's amazing. Uh, but for instance, Rachel, you could also be like. Helicopter mom would be one you could put on like mind. <laughs> uh, maybe your uh, yeah, so... type, type one diabetic for a body weakness. Oh, okay. Um, so I was thinking with soul um, to be peacemaker because like Savannah and I were super antagonistic. <laughs> so <laughs> my thought is for this game. Uh, that, like, she has always been, like, quietly pushing her husband, like, you really should reconcile with your sister, her family is important, uh, and so I kind of want to give her the trait peacemaker for her soul. Also, I'm going to self-correct, type 1 diabetes is not a weakness, it's a character trait. Carry on! <laughs> Meanwhile, my brain's just like, I don't like my sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I think I have some ideas for mine. Uh, these are slightly subject to change, but uh, for body, I'm thinking uh, sports hero slash teen Thor. Uh, for mine, I like it. yeah, for mine, Friday Night Lights is the only reason I've made it to senior year on time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, bro. And you said you couldn't come up with amazing things this time. What are the last <laughs> two? Uh, bro, uh, soul f- four, uh, family line, we are Bjornsson. Uh, and we believe in ball. Glorious. No wonder I just call you boy. <laughs> <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. Part, uh, personality aspect, bro. I'm struggling uh, with the, the last one to give for soul. Sorry, uh, go ahead, Rachel. Oh, so uh, I was thinking for my second soul one, like I was... I, it was sort of like mom talk where like you get to talk to mom and she's either like you can do it sweetie I believe in you or mm-hmm. like honey you should really stop this because it's hurting the people that you care about um but sure could. sort of like going off the um the conversation in the chat about food uh I've changed it to soul food where like oh, yeah. sort of the same thing but it's like she cooks for you and then has a conversation. Yeah. Just a big bowl of, like mashed potatoes and Swedish meatballs. Yeah. Hot dish. Yeah. Um, what did you have and what were you thinking for Henry? And maybe we can help you if you're stuck. Yeah, which is I just put in for body, I, I just put clumsy and used to play ball since like I think sports is a theme with this family. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for mine, I put forgetful because, you know, I, I picture him as the dad from like, uh, what was that movie? Um, Lost Boys. Uh, like he's got the glasses. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, yeah. You, know, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, he's, I, for, mm. he's forgetful, but he has sports nerd as a thing for uh, mine so far. Uh, soul, he put family first and encouraging. I don't know if that's. Yeah. Sense or not. Yeah, no, it works. Okay. Like you want to. Family first is perfect for soul. Yeah. Yeah, family first. Okay. Well, Bertie, you got. <laughs> oh, when you okay? So <laughs> because of our friend and cast member Bertie, whose name is Beatrice, I keep thinking you're talking to Beatrice. <laughs> oh, Beatrice Betty, hot. But no, I'm thinking like Bert, like Bert and Ernie, Bertie. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> this won't be a mess. <laughs> hot mess. Um, uh, so I was looking at body and I was thinking clumsy and as as oh, as get it from your dad. Yeah, get it from your dad. <laughs> asthmatic. I like it. Uh, 
for mind, I put three. Uh, the third one was inspired by just being the counter to K. <laughs> uh, clever, curious, and Teen Loki. Because <laughs> you said Teen Thor, Thor, Thor in my like, body. I, yeah. I got this. Yeah. Um, and then Soul, I'm kind of having a tough time coming up with a second one, but the first one I put imaginative. Okay. What are some ideas you have for me? Or like examples in the book? There's an R word I'm thinking of that's like you're able to bounce back quickly. That resilient. I'm... Resilient. Resilient. Yeah, I feel like kids are resilient, like young mm. children, like they can bounce back from a lot. I was gonna um, say rebound, and we all know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we know, and Aunt Mary, we know exactly what Aunt Mary was. Definitely thinking about. sports. Where's your wine glass? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 for resilience. It's in her yes. backpack, and she has those glasses that like loop around and like sit uh, the straw. Hell the yeah! Hair. Hell yeah! You can't, yeah, you can't drink in yeah. front of the kids, so it has to. I just have purple glasses. <laughs> so okay, to be fair, I haven't been able to think of any except for body. I have exercise, canvas to coffee maker. <laughs> nice. I I don't know why, but I feel like acrylic nails should just be like like the long like the the long nails should be like a body tree. <laughs> I'll do it. I don't care. Here we go. Good. <laughs> uh, so rounding out my character for body, I picked sleepless oh. nights. So she she knows how to go without sleep because you know kids need to be taken care of. I'm sort of like riffing on um, the suggestion for diabetes. I put low blood sugar. Okay. Yeah, you always need, yeah. You always need a Snickers. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> for mind, because her mind is three. So I've been obsessed recently with the TV show Community. Yeah. And so, uh, and sort of like the head canon, uh, springing off what we were talking about earlier, like. Uh, she barely graduated high school because she had to have baby Hank. I'm an oopsie baby. Um, and so she sort of like, now that her kids are a little bit grown, uh, she spends her time uh, taking classes at the local community college. So I've put down Greendale alum. I love it which is so like, much. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, latest gossip. So like, oh, yeah. her oh, book gosh. learning isn't great, but she's taken like art history classes at the local JC. So she knows weird stuff and also what's going on in the community. I want that. I'm for it. Uh, if you're looking for mind things uh, for Aunt Mary, maybe like a metropolitan, cause like, or, or those kind of things. Cause like you went and you left and you like became an artiste. And, so like, sort of... I put down that I was a like documentary snob oh, I, I watch all that. the documentaries <laughs> um, yes. um and can you be really be that like a strange like artsy aunt if you're not a horoscope expert <laughs> i love it i hope you have the knowledge to back that up for in-game shenanigans please That's what google's for uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was your what was aunt mary's art major like what, what kind of art did you did you specialize in? Just music, drawing, dance. Uh no, so I'm, I'm definitely like um like painting, sculpting type artist. Um, she's not she's not like a, a physical artist. Uh, that's why my only exercise is my walk from the canvas to the coffee maker. Um, uh, so yeah, like some. You could weave soul uh, attributes around that. You could have one that's like blank canvas where everything is just waiting for you to perfect it or seeing the final product where you can see the stone, but you can see the beautiful sculpture inside. I like that. Stuff like that. Yeah. You could also have like things about being an individual yes. in your soul. That would make sense. Free spirit. Free spirit. Free spirit, stubbornness. Using to concede. <laughs> <laughs> I need your character to 
be full on that guy, Eric, with the hair. <laughs> Need the wig. Need some I believe that's six for everyone then. Yeah. Cool. What's next? You've already created some of your interconnections, but feel free to elaborate now. Let the audience hear. Yeah. Some of this uh, we wanted to do on camera. Yeah. What? What should we? Anyone have an opinion on what we should start with? Or. Oh yeah. So the head cannon that I was coming up with is like so like this is supposed to be in the eighties essentially so like he always now that yeah yep very 80s motif combined with somehow now yeah so my character would have gotten pregnant in like 60s motif and Mm -hmm. so uh i sort of envision her as being presented with the choice of um like so she got pregnant senior year with her high school boyfriend um (laughs) and was presented with the choice of either uh, get married now or we're going to send you to like one of the shame houses. Uh, And she's like, I'm not giving my baby away. Fuck you. Okay. Um, Yeah, and so like whether Henry is Hank's father or not, um, like maybe he came along later, but that's the story that I'm sort of envisioning with this character. So for this horror movie, the really awesome way that would work is the kids and even Aunt Mary would always assume the child was Henry's, but that may or may not be true, and that'll just pop out in a tense moment. It could, yeah, it could. Okay. Like only only Henry and Beatrice know the truth of that. Yeah, my yeah, dad like, is like, actually your best friend. Yeah, I should sign message each other right now and decide. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yes, like, yes, you should. So I could have had like a really tumultuous, fucked up relationship with some dude. And then, like, Henry comes along and he's, like, uh, actually I'll decent. And, like, at at some indeterminate point later, uh, Betty's like, oh, shit, I'm pregnant. Yes. And Savannah's right. You should side mess each other and decide now. And don't even tell me. Just burst it out at an opportune, tight, tense moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. So, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Henry Jr., Hank, uh, is that oopsie baby, uh, Supreme Jock. Uh, this is certainly not a nerd sweatshirt for some place uh, event called Pax Unplugged. What this is, is this is a P for James K. Polk High School for I am the head in the sports ball for the Polk Paladins. This is not nerd shit. These are the Polk Paladins, our awesome sports ball team, which I lead on. Also, also, when you describe your character, mm-hmm. you should look more like Betty and less like Henry to leave that question open. Ooh, Same for okay, Lambert. yeah. <laughs> I just messaged that to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can definitely do that. We'll, we'll see how Betty described it, and I can definitely do some of that. Oh, you have our recessive green eyes from your great Aunt Michelle. Yeah, so or like, plot twist everyone it's actually Mary's son that she gave <gasps> Betty, Betty. <laughs> uh, uh. plot twist Mary's son that you gave to her. that's why you always refer to me as boy because it's too painful to refer to me by the name your painful. your brother and sister-in-law gave to the to your child <laughs> like God, we should write soap operas like, no. we should write soap operas <laughs> want to get into novels that they sell at supermarkets <laughs> together <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Aunt Mary uh, calls me boy. Doesn't ever remember my name. Yep. (laughs) Mary and Henry, what's your relationship like now, and what was it like previously? Parents never accepted Mary. It doesn't mean Henry had to ostracize her. Uh, Are you talking about uh, Betty, or? No, Mary, your sister. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Your parents always made uh, Mary the black sheep, and you were the golden child, Henry. Oh, that's weird because, no. okay, so the, yeah, because he's, I just kind of figure him as like a, a lovable dope. Exactly. You're the <laughs> so, perfect yeah. Midwestern dad and Mary <laughs> was the, uh, I refuse to settle down and find a husband. Yeah. He's like, I, I if I just would have done, if I just didn't have that injury, I would have been a pro game. I would have been a pro baller. That's all there is to it. Now I just read about it in the newspaper. Uh, but she had to go get a highfalutin education somewhere, some artsy fartsy school, you know. That's the let's end receipt on Mary probably. <laughs> um, so uh, in my head canon, um, growing up, you did call her MJ, um, 
but whether you still feel comfortable calling her that is up to you. Um, if you feel like you guys still have that connection or like, maybe like we can have like a tender moment and <laughs> you call her by her nickname again. Um, she definitely, uh, when she left, she like, you know how, like when you like leave town or like leave your state, you're like, oh, we're going to keep in touch. And like, no one ever, ever does. Um, mm -hmm. Like for like maybe like the first couple of years, like she would like send you letters or like whatever. Uh, but then like as like the time progressed, like she just kind of stopped um, mm. reaching out um, until uh, recently. Um, maybe with uh, Hank graduate uh, graduating high school, uh, she decided to like reach back out, uh, and then, like the, this is like when she decided like okay fine i'll i'll come back out we'll take a family road trip we'll go see our parents um i don't really want to um but like we're you know aging maybe you know we i should be uh nice and come back around now I the way these like... characters are connected i would also say henry did not mend defense beatrice did it was beatrice who reached out and played mediator yeah uh... as the peacemaker oh. Yeah, if it's if it's about Henry uh, graduating college, then like Beatrice would have sent uh, an invitation to the graduation ceremony and the graduation party, and that also would have come with like uh, a handwritten letter about um, you know the kids miss you, um, and it would mean a lot if you were there for Hank, and you know you don't have to get along with me and Henry, but at least be there for your nephews. Boy. Boy and boy too. Boy and boy too. <laughs> yeah, I imagine he's probably, Hank's probably in his senior year of high school. So like maybe like um, if we're setting this, uh, we, we didn't say it was an event, it was a birthday. Maybe it's like part way through the school year and the goal is to have things smoothed over so we can have this family graduation party at the oh, end of I the like year. That. Oh, so then it would have been a Christmas card. She would have sent a Christmas card. Yeah, you sent a Christmas card. And like now it's like February break or something like that. Yeah. The birthday mm -hmm. tends to fall in line with that. You're muted, Tyler. Uh, I'm going to throw a twist into this too. Okay. You got a full ride scholarship for sports ball to the same college Aunt Mary went to. Ooh, yes. <laughs> sports ball to the same and college the, you went to. And the dirty secret, because I'm giving you each one. Ooh. For Henry is your teachers were manipulated and arm twisted into passing you because you've been scouted and it's oh good hell yeah that. it's good for the high school you, <laughs> oh, you are yeah. totally failing even though you've got all c's oh yeah oh hell yeah i definitely <laughs> yeah yes ahem friday night lights uh is the only reason i passed they needed me for the friday night lights uh side note i think i am such a jockhead is because uh uh your injury like happened not long maybe after i was born or before i was born henry and so like I am both your namesake, but also like your weird, twisted kind of legacy. Like I didn't do it, but I could have. But now look, my boy, my chip off the old shoulder. He's doing it. He's gonna go play pro ball at this big city school. Like a golden child. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Teen Thor. <laughs> what about Lambert? What's Birdie like? I pick on you. Oh uh, yeah, probably <laughs> you're, because you're my sensitive boy. That sounds well, about for right. sensitive boys. Hey, my landy. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> that gets you teased so bad at school, and I'm oh, oblivious God. and don't care. Birdie. Oh, yeah. I feel like, though, I pick on you and I pick on you with my group of friends, but also I will shove any shit in a locker who thinks they can really fuck with you because you're my brother, and like only I can do that kind of thing. Uh, I'm throwing, yep, a, I'm throwing up a couple right. side messages, so continue talking amongst yourselves. Um, if uh, if Aunt Mary would have been in the picture, she definitely would have been that aunt who just like showed up to school and like totally didn't threaten minors to stop picking on her nephews. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking just has cigarettes and like as the kids are getting out for like the lunch period, she's like, ah. like, like <laughs> dips ash. It's like I heard you were fucking with Lambert Bjornson. <laughs> Eddie, why do I have to be rich and dying from an illness? You're so rude. <laughs> I feel like 
you met us maybe a couple times when we were like smaller before it sort of dropped off and i feel like you send like very interesting artistic imaginative gifts to lambert and i get like a ball of some sort every year but it's, it's never the right kind it's of ball it's never a football ball of whatever it is it's, ball. She sends it's never balls. a football you send me like softball i've got like basketball soccer ball at one point she sent you a tether ball once no ball. you don't have a tether pole you don't have a tether pole like, you never sent, sent ball. the accurate sports ball but you've always sent sports balls <laughs> but like lambert gets some like interesting artistic some bullshit like that actually Don't touch my telescope! Don't touch my telescope. Okay, so Betty and Aunt Mary have a dark secret we're not going to share. Ooh, hey. fuck. I want dark secrets. Tyler, rest of the night. The secret lovers. <laughs> <laughs> your dark secret is you're fucking... <laughs> you're getting that free ride. That free ride. Totally I'll give you a darker ours. one if you want it. Uh, always, Tyler. Always. I mean, it's pay, man. <laughs> dark ish, real dark, full dark, no stars. I mean, we're all suffer puppets here. Yeah, suff- I like that term, suffer puppet. Sorry, Tyler, what were you saying? <laughs> Darkish, real dark, full dark, no stars. Uh, somewhere between full dark and no stars. There's like one star, and you can only see it because the smog parted a little bit. The smog? I love that. The smog among the smog. stars. The Midwestern smog. Oh. <laughs> Make my try my my character tragic and terrible. If if, if they're not suffering, that's not a real terrible. dark. Make sure you're okay with that. But that's appropriate for this movie. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. As fucking yes. Okay. I'm in uh. danger. I can only imagine. <laughs> Are we all? <laughs> I feel mm. like if Mary survives this and knows this secret, someone's probably going to die. Mm-hmm. Here you go, Eric. That's juicy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's Please. four. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Lambert's probably the most innocent little thing. Well, Lambert's only 12. Like, 12, yeah. What, what, what's going to happen to him? Hopefully nothing. I will end anyone. <laughs> Tyler. He's the sensitive. Tyler, child. don't you dare. <laughs> Tyler's going to come for this fucking child. How you doing? I'm watching you. How are you? <laughs> to, quote, to quote one of my favorite members of this channel, uh, a big a big man of sorts, uh, fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's everyone but Lambert. What are we going to do to Lambert? So, I just Stop. want everyone to appreciate like the side history that... <laughs> Think my Betty and Lupine Vendetta have been making for my character. On the Wait, oh the god, shower. I have to go look. I want to go look. <laughs> so, um, Aunt Mary um, is rich and dying from his mysterious um, illness. <laughs> uh, but Aunt Mary is rich from hum- a human trafficking ring she runs. <laughs> <laughs> in Nevada, but, but she fell in love with an ATF agent that's been snooping her out. That's. <laughs> I, I need. I, I'm no. gonna need a sip of wine for this. <laughs> you are. You must have a perm. <laughs> no, hurt my nephew. It's rude. That is what you meant, right, Tyler? What oh, yes, yes, you? yes. Tyler's All right, brain glorious. Half capacity, you don't <laughs> mind him. <laughs> Amber. Ambers, I will hurt you. <laughs> Amber, please Joke's add. on you, I'm into that shit. <laughs> Amber, please add one point of weird to start the game. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Spicy. I love it. Uh... <laughs> Henry, please add one point of weird to start the game. 
Weird. Which okay. Henry? Is that personal? Is that personal? Senior. <laughs> Henry Senior. Yes, you have one point of personal weird pool. Oh, okay. Uh, that's not good, side oh. note, just FYI, <laughs> for those who haven't played the game, because you can only reach a max of 10 weird before mm. you are basically fucked, and you either die or become part of, like, the veil. Interesting. I'm for it. Okay. Uh, oh, is it ahead, spelled... W-Y-R-D. The, the, okay. the, the, the that's proper what I way. Yeah. The proper way, yes. I have a crown now. I'm a queen. Oh, yep. This this is accurate. Are you wearing yellow like Rachel that one time? <laughs> Are you the queen in yellow? There's only one. I, I have a little bit of yellow right here. There's some yellow. But uh, Paisley. The queen in Paisley. <laughs> the, queen, the queen in Paisley. <laughs> Uh, the next thing I'm publishing is the comic repository now. <laughs> um, in case anybody wants a character sheet, I have. A, like, oh yes, I forgot to one. ask you to send that because it's real handy. Uh, so then, since this got brought up before, uh, what does Betty look like? Yeah, start with Betty, and we'll go around the line so we don't have to do it in the first scene. And any oh, yeah. particular mannerisms that are constant. Uh, so Betty is, uh, let's see, 18 plus 16, uh, 17, so 35, she's 35 years old, um, and, uh, has sort of, like, not necessarily, so she hasn't let herself go necessarily, but she has sort of given up on her appearance, uh, and so she does the whole mom jeans thing, um, and she's got a sensible haircut, uh, and has probably become, you know, very full-figured, uh, especially because she's of, like, solid Midwestern Swedish-Norwegian ancestry. Um, but, like, it's nice, because, like, she gives, like, the really good mom hugs, so, like... There's a lot of like squishy comfort there. Um, yeah, and so probably one of her creative outlets is baking. So she almost always smells like a vanilla and cocoa powder or condensed milk and just all of those nice baking scents. Okay, let's jump to Henry next. What is her coloration? Oh. Like hair, eye colors, uh, skin tone. Uh, she was probably one of those people who was uh, blonde as a kid and her hair got darker uh, as she grew older. And at some point she just gave up on keeping it bleached and just let it go to like, um, you know, like a dirty blonde now. Um, nice green eyes that Hank inherited. And are you, uh, uh, as ceramic white as Henry because he's a Bjornsson? Um, probably not. Or are you more flavorful? Probably not super ceramic white. Um, her, her family history is, uh, probably like a little interesting. So okay. she's maybe a couple shades darker. What about Henry, the Viking? Uh, senior? <laughs> yeah, senior? you. <laughs> okay. Henry, uh, I'll, 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 be, I'll be, Yeah, I'll be referring to Kay's characters, Hank, to make it easy. Okay. Um, I would imagine he's just sort of a layabout. He doesn't do much. He's just kind of like a, a doofus. Uh, but he's a lovable doofus. So he, you know, he's into sports. He's always been into sports. But he flunked out, so he's sort of living vicariously through his children. In this case, Hank is the the star promised one, you know, the one who's gonna like do what he was able able to do uh, mm. when he was a young a younger adult. Um, so he's just that's what he's looking forward to the most is making sure that he's able to that his children and Hank in particular can succeed where he did not. Um, but mostly he's just into sports. So like he's always watching and cursing at the TV and shit when there was a, there's like a playoff going on or whatever and reading the paper, you know, doing 80s dad things. 
uh, listening to the radio in the garage and smoking a pipe occasionally and whatever, you know. It's like, that's basically him in a nutshell. And your physical appearance, stats? Tall, lanky. I gave him seven uh, for a uh, body, uh, which is supposed to be an indication that, like, oh, yeah, he was. So you run or you work out? Back in the okay. day or whatever. Yeah. He's pretty fast. And uh, mind four, soul four. So, like, what you see is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> and are you, you uh, blonde hair, blue eye, typical, or are you brown hair? Uh, I put okay. the picture of him in the the Discord because he is. Uh, I just oh, you really are straight Edward, up him. Nice. What's his face? Yeah, like that's what I imagine immediately. He's like '80s dad. Yeah, that's the guy right there. Glasses and stuff. You know, he's parted in the middle. He's wearing like a checkered shirt or something. Okay, windbreaker. <laughs> We'll come back to Mary in a moment. She's conspiring. We're going to move to Lambert. Ah! Um, uh, so he is pretty frail compared to Hank. Uh, he has asthma and needs his inhaler. And um, I say he's probably got blonde hair and what what color eyes does Green. Eric's? Okay. Because you're yeah. copy because you're supposed to look like Betty. Because we don't know whose kid is whose. Wait, I thought yeah, I was supposed to look Hank like Hank is Betty. supposed to look like Betty. We should have Lambert yeah. do it too, because you never know. Okay. Yeah. Oh fuck. I'm I actually mean, your kid, but you were the affair child. Based based nope, on what we have been conspiring. Uh, it would make a lot of sense for Lambert to look like Henry. Okay. Do that. We should so have, uh, color eyes or... Bad eyesight. Yeah, bad eyesight. Uh, the, just like that picture in Monday Round 2. That's exactly... I it. can't tell what color eyes that guy has from that picture. You have green eyes. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, so then... Wait, no, it needs to be a different eye color because we said Betty had green eyes. Hazel? Well, they could both have green eyes. You could have, yeah, you could have real like green a, and hazel. Yeah. Yeah, hazel's okay. like in between brown and green. Yeah, like a okay. Okay. Blonde hair, hazel eyes. Or you could have strange colored eyes out of nowhere. You could be heterochromatic. You could be heterochromatic. You could have like one hazel eye and one like really blue eye. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh left eye blue. Right eye. That fits you being a little weird. Weird. Mm-hmm. Make the like... right eye brown as if oh, okay, it... Okay, yeah. Oh, left eye green. Right eye brown. Okay. As if it split hazel in two. Um, he definitely has glasses. He tries to dress like a sports kid with the hat, and the but he wears like tie-dye shirts all the time. Um, acid wash jeans and just some plain sneaks. Um, he's he definitely is more interested in books and stuff. He's more likely to spout sports facts at you than actually do the sports. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, I think he might have a lisp just because the character is very much in my head the character uh from the goonies sean astin who kind of has a bit of one so and last but not least mary i haven't gone yet she looks just like hank i mean henry Uh, or do you no i don't should i go or do you want mary to go I'm going to have Mary go. What am I doing? I, I wanted to confuse the hell out of you. Give us your description because the cons- the conspiring is over. Oh. Me. I look like me. Uh, no. <laughs> um, she's a very eccentric woman. Um, she probably has more of her mother's genes. Um on the Henry side, um, she uh, has uh, a green eyes and probably reddish brown hair. Um, 
though it's probably more grown out than mine. Um, and she probably has a few hidden tattoos somewhere. Wink. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's fine. Goodness gracious, puppy lover. <laughs> what about um, <laughs> permanent mannerisms, too? <laughs> like things that Mary always does. Do you emote with your hands? Do you have a certain twitch? Do you always tend into the steering wheel? Stuff that people, family would notice. Too much perfume. A specific kind of wine you like, perhaps from a box. Don't you ever... <laughs> ever suggest that me or any of my characters drink box wine oh my god you have to try the box wine that rosie loves though side note sorry <laughs> i will it's actually good i mean it is good because like it doesn't get oxygenated as fast as bottled wine does Oh, sir. Oxygenate, oxygenate wine. the wine but in terms of holding longer once it's, it's in the glass but not once you open the bottle no, you have to let the bottle mm -hmm. breathe. You have to let it... To... Mine should be aerated. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm the type of person, <laughs> I'm not re-corking that wine at the end of the night. That bottle is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Real hand energy gone. there. That wine is gone. There is no re-corking. Ultimate hand energy. <laughs> That's a lot of insight into Aunt Mary. <laughs> I, I am forever the aunt. Um, <laughs> IRL. <laughs> um, uh, she'll never, uh, things that uh, maybe Henry uh, and, and Betty would know. Um, she tries to be very polite, but she will never drink her coffee because she has her expensive Nespresso uh, coffee maker at home, and your coffee just isn't good enough. Um, <laughs> uh, she uh, is very expressive with her hands. Uh, <laughs> um, she uh, she still smokes, uh, but she tries. Uh, to hide it, uh, she probably has one of those stupid vape pins uh, <laughs> that she'll like sneak in like the very back corner of the yard. Um, let's see. Uh, she definitely, uh, when you crack open a bottle of wine, it will be empty by the end of the night. You are not recorking that son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, she is definitely one of those people that, like, has just, like, random shit in her purse. Um, she probably has, like, mini canvases in her purse. Um, and, like, probably, like, a sketchbook with some, like, charcoals. Like, just, like, and her purse is just an utter, like, she's, like, very put together. But, like, you open her purse and it looks like a fucking kindergarten just, like, dumps their art project in there. Eh. <laughs> is there a seam ripper in it? Probably, Yes. Absolutely, there's a steam ripper in there. Probably some K clay, not K. <laughs> there's some K in there. Um, <laughs> there's some like little 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 bit of clay. Um, probably a couple bottles of like paint, little mini um, I mean, like canvases. You um, it looks like you went shoplifting at a Michaels. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, okay. pretty much. I mean, you said K, so now I'm also wondering about the presence of cat tranquilizer in the purse. <laughs> oh, Lupi Vendetta, 10,000%. Mary has 100% coyote ugly on a bar somewhere. Yes. <laughs> she probably was up there last Friday. Uh, not even gonna lie. Also, hey, uh, Total Party Chill, thank you for the oh, raid. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. You are We're setting up our suffer puppetry right now. Our suffer puppetry, yes. yeah, these wonderful solemn valent characters. That note, I think it's Hank's turn. Yeah, it's Hank's turn. So, yeah, uh, if you've ever seen the actor Trevor Donovan from 90210, uh, the new one. That's sort of the vibes we're going with here. Uh, again, very young Thor. Uh, like a blonde <laughs> hair that's definitely there. Uh, green eyes. Um, 
Uh, his skin is like very golden and dark, and but that's definitely just because he spends a lot of time out in the sun. Definitely, you know, a shade or two darker than both his mother and his father. But again, he's out in the sun all the time, you know, running around doing sports ball. Uh, he's always in like a signature Letterman and like the Paladins hat. He's very into his sports gear. He usually has some kind of ball, either or like a teammate or a cheerleader probably on his arm. Um, every weekend, this kid is definitely at a party. He has not done homework once since like ninth grade. Like, just never, ever, ever. Yeah, he's got a very, like, yeah, built physique. Um, he's clearly working out a lot. Uh, like, 6'2 height. Um, yeah, he lives at the gym. Glorious. Okay. One more side thing happening, but we can multitask. After character creation, we should discuss that Solemn Vale is a game where the story matters most. Likely, as normal, you'll want to cheer your PC through the horror that unfolds. However, this game isn't really about winning on a personal level. It's about seeing how events unfold and the fates that befall you all. This means terrible things will happen to you. You might be injured, you might become tainted, or your soul is ensnared by the weird. If you suffer this way, you're not failing. It's an opportunity to explore the weirdness of full core. Because remember, in full core, nobody gets out unscathed. So your goal is not to escape with sanity intact, it's to be to explore what the darkness does to you along the way. Hence all the side drama and the dark secrets. Setbacks and disasters are a part of full core and bring these stories alive. So the game is divided into scenes, uh, like a full core movie would have. An opening scene, maybe a prelude, a closing scene, an epilogue, and the scenes in between. Uh, I have oversight on when scenes change and what happens to the denizens of Solemn Vale when they do. The world is alive, like in a full core movie. They're still doing things off camera. And usually you'll find out the hard way when it's revealed. Uh, I will assign a weird pool to each scene. Normally it will be a static number of number of players plus one. Uh, however, I may modify that sometimes for specific scenes where the weird is weaker or stronger. Uh, not every scene will involve every character, but we'll get to how you can change that in a minute when we talk about the weird. I will also set whatever the stage rules or changes might be for the scene. Uh, I will assign a challenge rating or a value of a challenge to every obstacle you have to overcome. Like I told you earlier, rating between 2 and 10. Obviously, as base dies a single d6, harder challenges, which I'll tell you when they are, will require you to sacrifice to succeed. Uh, we touched on the themes of each challenge previously, but we're going to go deeper into them now. We're going to start with body, which are, if you remember, obstruction, pursuit, and threat. Obstruction is a physical barrier or impediment of some kind. Pursuit is a challenge of swiftness and movement. This can also include hiding. Threat is direct danger of a physical kind. This could be fighting or having trees thrown at you by a large monster. The challenges of mind are logic, pressure, and wits. Logic is intelligence, figuring out patterns, deciphering codes. Pressure is social interaction. And wits is perception and swiftly reacting to changing situations. Soul are foreboding, invocation, and taint. Foreboding is a challenge of fear and determination. Invocation is a challenge of occult control. And taint is a challenge of resisting corruption. Questions on any of those? So basically when I call for those in the first few games, I can repeat them to you, understand them. You can decide as a group when I tell you what the challenge is, who should be ach achieving it and whatnot. What was the, the first three you said? Obstruction, uh, Pursuit threat, and, and threat. Pursuit. Pursuit. Hiding in movement and speed. And how many points do we have to distribute on those? Or no, those are just the kinds of challenges I'll call for. Oh, got it. Okay, okay. And then you can determine as a group who is best to lead the way against any challenge based on your attributes and your uh, traits assigned to the attributes. Okay. I can give you a quick example of how it would work. So imagine that you're confronting the old witch in the Blackwoods. It's nighttime, but you're desperate to stop the witch, so you press on regardless of the gloom. To find the courage to even enter the Midnight Woods, I tell you, you must overcome the foreboding challenge. I give you uh, 
a high value DC because it's night and it's worse at night. So your difficulty is six and you must roll soul. And if you succeed, you're too scared to even enter the woods. Uh, and then that's a complication you have to somehow overcome. Having managed to find the bravery between them, you face down the old witch whose terrifying aura and dark sorcery impose challenges of foreboding and taint. You have to overcome the dread of fighting her and not be corrupted by her evil magic in order to defeat her. And then trying to escape, you get lost in the black woods and the weird. And I do a, a role for the weird independent of you to set a very specific kind of uh, occult ob obstacle. And several of you are caught in the maze requiring you to overcome challenges of obstruction, threat, or logic as your character traits dictate to escape the thorns. So that's what they mean, Eric. Okay, thank you. Mm hmm Um, well done. I'm going to restart the song because a couple of people, I gave them the wrong roll 20. Okay. Uh, challenge values of two or three are relatively trivial, but still need to be rolled. Uh, a town drunk beyond his wits who wants to fight a crossword puzzle, stuff like that. Four to six, or uh, four to six, are genuine obstacles or threats. Uh, de defeating a uh, determined but not really skilled cultist, a tricky lock, or resisting a malevolent but lesser curse. Values of seven or above are genuinely difficult, dangerous occultist, heavily deciphered deck text, soul draining incantations. Anything ten or higher is ridiculous. Game ending. No matter how high the challenge value, though, if you have enough ability points to overcome it, you can have some level of certainty you'll win. However, you're risking everything to do it. Which is what we're going to get into next. Weird. Uh, well, first we'll discuss what happens when you fail a challenge. There are... Uh, four main forms that takes narrative where i change the story that's the main way because it's a story-based horror game damage where i inflict a penalty on your ability points i force you to spend the points because you failed you might lose a point of body if you get hurt you might lose a point of mind if your sanity slips so that's why you have to be real careful when you spend your points because i might take them from you trauma where you skip damage and go straight to scratching the ability out because it's just too much this is powerful magic or catastrophic events. Weird, where failing a challenge exposes you to the weird, where I might raise or lower your current weird pool, or trigger a weird roll where everyone has to roll weird, which we'll get to in a minute. So that's how failure affects a character in this game. The weird pool at the beginning of each scene will be assembled equal to the number of characters plus one unless I say otherwise. So most scenes you'll have six or seven when our final player rejoins next week. Uh, you can draw points from the weird pool to do any of the following things, which I'm going to drop also in the Discord. There. You can add one to the result of a challenge roll after you see the dice roll. You can spend points from a different ability than normal to make the challenge roll. So, like... You can't overcome the physical threat, but you're a smart kid, so you decide to go for the kneecaps. You can spend a point of weird from the weird pool to let me to take points out of mine to add to your dice pool. Uh, invoke a specific stage rule that forces a point of weird expenditure, even if it's not the stage rule from the scene. This would normally be for a PvP purpose. Uh, Increase or reduce the result of any single weird roll by one after you see the results. This is normally for when I force you to roll weird and you can make it worse for someone or make it better for yourself. Or introduce a previously encountered allied or friendly denizen into the scene who would not normally have been there. At the end of the scene, all weird points are lost and refresh. Your personal weird, however, never changes unless I tell you so. Every time you pull a point from the weird, you gain a point in your personal pool, one for one. When your personal pool hits 10, Solemn Veil vale consumes you in whatever way we think is most devious. You might not die. You might become the supervillain. You might turn on everyone and shoot them in the final penultimate scene. We'll decide that later. Side note, also, for people, uh, 
our lovely GM can assign weird points to us if we do crazy shit. So don't just think, oh, I won't let myself get to 10. Yep. A lot of times failing a weird roll will result in you gaining weird. <laughs> uh, between scenes, every time scenes change, you cannot do anything that alters the narrative, but you can do a few things that can alter your character. So uh, you can make influence rolls, which allows you to influence the, uh, the characters in the story, or perhaps more importantly, each other as PCs. Uh, when we call for an influence roll, you're not rolling a single d6. You're rolling a number of d6s equal to your total starting attribute. And then you roll it. And then we figure out what happens based on the result of said roll. Uh, examples of why this would matter would be who's affected by a challenge's consequence. Perhaps the black dog catches you and I close the scene on the cliffhanger for our break. You roll influence and the loser is the one who gets tackled by the dog. You might use it to determine the outcome of something that doesn't have any meaningful impact but still matters. Uh, does the bartender like you? You might use it to determine an outcome which isn't a challenge but shapes the narrative in a future scene. Who has the worst nightmares when you sleep that night? Maybe I can give you hints through those nightmares. You can also use it to reflect the influence of the weird. Uh, you roll a number of dice equal to your current personal weird pool, and then I have a special chart to make things happen, good and bad. You never know what you might get. And lastly, recovering spent ability points. If you use two points of body, you can roll your body as a dice pool, and if you get a success for the target number I set, which is normally six for that, you can get a point of body back that you spent in the scene. You get a splint for your armor, you rest up and get rid of the leg cramps, whatever. Questions about influence rolls. Spending the stat points is kind of like a like a risk, right? Like you yep. said that if you it's like if I need to do something, I gotta bust down a door or die, and it's like, okay, I need to make this roll. I can spend body points, and then I roll a single D6 and add uh sorry. I spend the number of dice equal to how many points I spent started my with. body stat. And I add You're that to 1d6, and then that determines the target number, or that or I, I roll that and total it up and uh, apply it to the target number that you set, which is you said it usually is like six. To recover an ability score, yeah. Oh, okay. So if I, if you I manage to at you least make a six, I get some of those points back. Otherwise, you can say, no, you lose them. Right. You don't recover them. You had an unrestful okay. rest period. So it's like a risk. Like you're risking your 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 mind or your soul or your body to no. overcome a challenge. You, uh, for an influence roll, it's the one time you're not risking anything. If you fail, there's oh. no bad consequence. You don't recover the point. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Any other time, it's a risk. Hmm. So in other words, in the, act, in the actual active scene, you spend one point of body. In the downtime between scenes, you want to try to recover it. In the recovery roll, you're not risking more body, which you might not be able to recover if you roll badly. Okay. Uh, I also might add modifiers to recovery rolls based on how well you rest. So, if your ability is scratched out, though, you can never recover those points. They're gone forever. That's why that's a risk. That's exhausted, and I'm also going to tell you narratively this is what happens to you. Lose mind, go mad. Lose soul, become possessed by the evil witch of the woods. <laughs> uh, lose body, broke your leg. Whatever. If you get to a point where you would have had an ability scratched out when it already is, like Eric spent all his body points and it scratched out, and he takes enough damage to scratch out body, and you're defeated. You could die. You could go mad. Absorbed by the town. That's the second way you lose. Ten weird points, double scratched out ability. Uh, and that's the end of the rules as far as the players are concerned. I'm not going to spoil all the fun weird stuff. You'll find out along the way. So, any questions off the bat? And don't worry about the influence rolls. We'll do that when we get to it between the scene moments so you can see how it works. 
I just picked out, I just found the, the pin, so that's helpful. <laughs> We've been spanked and we haven't even done anything wrong. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, why? Why? He's just Speaking warming of which, us up. Speaking of which, Betty, please record this for me. Since you can pin, you're allowed to pin it. The following rules apply. Audience awards, not votes. Dear audience, you can do one of two things with your awards in Solemn Vale. You can let someone recover an ability point of their choice. You can, of course, a weird point on someone. However, forcing a weird point on someone allows them to roll weird as a roll. And if they succeed, they actually get a good benefit. If they fail, they get the weird point you wanted them to have. Spending points. Summon the Elder Gods will force a weird roll immediately in that scene on all players with an outcome determined by me as Solemn Vale turns its eyes on the party. Any lesser value of summoning Elder Gods will do whatever I decide fits the scene. Banishing the Elder Gods will allow all players to remove one point from their personal weird pools immediately. Mm. Audience votes are worth one free chance at the end of session slash beginning of next session for any care, whoever they vote for to attempt to recover spent ability points. Player votes, because there's no experience as it as per se in Solemn Vale, will let you do one of two things. Sorry, one of three things. One, recover a scratched out ability. Two, uh, Avoid instant death or madness one time. Or three, inflict a roll of your choice on any other player at any moment. (laughs) Remember that time you grounded me, Mom? (laughs) It's for your own good, sweetie. (laughs) Roll body. (laughs) Yeah, I was totally thinking like he was going to go after me for never giving him the right present. (laughs) (laughs) Aunt, Aunt Mary, what is my name? <laughs> Boy? <What? laughs> we got got all that Betty. Betty went to bed, by the way. No, not that Betty, the other Betty. Oh, Betty. Mom, Betty. Oh, God. Mom Betty. Me Mom Betty. Betty. We have so yes. many. <laughs> The no, thing is, I already the just only one her one at all. I was no idea who you were talking to. <laughs> Betty. I thought you meant Betty Betty in the chat because he just redeemed points. Ooh. Nope, that was for our, our fearless narrator to record. For posterity. Yeah, you probably should have said Rachel. Probably. <laughs> but I would hope that Spank My Betty doesn't have pin power in our chat room. <laughs> you never know. You never so, know. So, the Betty that is not the spanking Betty, the one that's Beatrice, but not Birdie, and definitely not Birdie, who's actually a Lambert, who definitely isn't Lammy. I'm going to need Lambert to make a weird roll immediately. And on that note, we're taking our mid-show break. So don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. <laughs> this Betty doesn't believe in spanking. They believe in only positive reinforcement. They, they believe in gentle parenting. <laughs> gentle Parenting. <laughs> Helicopter parenting. Yes.
break. Just a big fluffy white dog in the corner. And we have returned to begin our tale in Solemn Vale. Or in this case, a backcountry road. It's not an interstate. It's labeled as a highway. But it is just a two-lane, sometimes blacktop, sometimes not quite blacktop, heading through endless fields of sawgrass. Which, for those who don't know, is a species of grass that can grow up to eight feet high in some places. Heading through somewhere in the Midwest, towards somewhere else in the Midwest. You've been on this road for an hour. The last time you passed a building was at the turn off to this road. Of any kind. It's a nice day, though. The weather's nice. Uh, what's Henry got playing on the radio? Driver picks. Passenger felt uh, staple. Uh, I was thinking Blue Oyster Cult, but whatever. Glorious. <laughs> Who's in shotgun? I was wondering about Polka because the Midwest thing, but okay. Blue Oyster Cult is even more Midwest. So uh, who's in shotgun? Probably Betty. Betty. Okay. Is Aunt Mary in the middle on the left or on the right? The left. And is this a sedan, Henry, before our... of that course matters? It is. Or is... Or, uh, sorry, a station wagon. Station wagon. Station wagon. Glorious. With the wood paneling on the side? Yes. Ambiguous 80s Woody. <laughs> mm, that's a sentence. And who's next to Aunt Mary and who's up against the window? Uh, Lamb Birdie is definitely in the middle because he's small. I am six two. You are not putting me in the middle. Okay. Begin the scene. Baby, I'm your man. Da, 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 da. So I spy with my little eye something uh. that starts with L. Oh, Mary. What? Oh my God! Wait, where? <laughs> like, like, Hank. Like, like Hank, Hank looks up from his phone for the first time in like hours, and like looks out the window, expecting. Like, <laughs> lesbians don't exist until college, Hank. Excuse me, Betty. Wait, what? <laughs> They don't just magically appear when Hank enters college. They do as far as Hank's concerned. Anyway, no, I do not see lesbians. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, I see. Hank, the biggest smirk on his face. Like, it just reaches, like, a large fist over the little Lambert's head and just, like, digs his fist in and, like, a noogie. It's like, it's your little lammy. Stop calling me that! Settle oh. down now. No, stop bullying your brother. The rules say it has to be outside the car. <laughs> um. He like looks out the window. <laughs> like, I have nothing better to do at this point in time. I'm not allowed to have an open container in this car. <laughs> <laughs> It's not bullying, it's toughening him up. He's gonna start like middle to high school soon. I'm trying to think of an L that would be outside the damn car. <laughs> what Savannah's you're family? Big brother, you're, supp- you're, you're the big one. You gotta protect your brother. I can protect myself. Yes, you uh, can. Of course Arthur. you can, sweetie. But... I don't know, is it like, and like, he, like, despite the fact that you've stated that it has to be something outside of the car, I think he spies like a bag of licorice in like in the front seat because we are a Scandinavian family. He's like, licorice. Log. We had just driven past a log on the side of the road. That's log. funny. All I'm seeing is grass. <laughs> log. A log, really? Okay. Your turn, Hank. Boy. Fine. Boy, <laughs> your turn, boy. <laughs> All right, I spy with my large, awesome eyes something. That's not the words you're starts, saying. It wrong. I just like reach a hand over and smack you in the side. <laughs> just starts with <laughs> G. 
She like puts her hand and like straightens out his head. <laughs> Starts with G. G. Uh. I'm bad at this game. In in out of character. Well, there you go. Granite. You, see you saw granite. No. Do you really think he would know what granite looks like? Outside? Look at her countertops, right? Uh, yeah, sure. A gate. Uh, you saw a gate, didn't gates you? Gates around here, nerd? Maybe. No, nothing but grass. <laughs> Is it grass? Yeah, it's a fucking gremlin. Grass. You saw it's a gremlin, grass. right? I, I did not oh. see a gremlin. The only gremlin's like right here in the car. And he's like, again. <laughs> hey! A gremlin's the car, hey. too. Be <laughs> nice to your brother. Gremlin's listen to your mother. I listen, whatever. He just like pulls out a ball. And it's by the small space in this car. He's just like up, down, up, down, up, down, like a football. Like, you're gonna drop it on my don't head or something. Jack the roof of your father's car. Oh, well, we're going go on this road. We need to take a rest. I have to pee. Okay, okay. All right, sweetie. We'll take <laughs> just the next turn off. Can you hold it? Yeah, but if I can't, I'll pee on Hank. Uh, don't pee on your I brother. Don't pee on your brother. Brothers Boy, don't you. pee on each other. I will destroy you. Over to the side. Mary leans <laughs> over to Lambert. It would be a vast improvement on his smell. It just acts body spray this entire car. Axe body spray. <laughs> Actually, I would like to point out that uh, if a jellyfish stings you, you're supposed to pee on it. So that that's good. I didn't. Did you know that? I Are you that. really supposed to, or did you just read that somewhere? I read that somewhere. That's where you get all the stuff that you're supposed to know. You know, it's, you're supposed to learn when you read stuff. No, you learn from coach. Coach teaches. Okay, you Lamb, go know. take a leak. Uh, Junior, come on here. You know, let's, let's let's toss the ball back a, a couple. Yeah, yeah. Can pull the car right? over. <laughs> pull the car yeah. over, Dad. Yeah. yeah. Endless fields of sawgrass. The following stage rules will now apply to the scene. Like it. Lost in the grass. Every time the scene changes, the difficulties of all rolls increase by one. If you fail, you're lost in the grass. Two. Weird. Isolated. Anytime you're separated from the group in an amount of two or less of you, you must complete a separate foreboding or witch challenge at the end of the scene. If you fail, you'll take a damage to all abilities. That's spicy. Uh, yeah, Hank's going to take uh, the ball out of the car with him, the football, and he's just going to back up and immediately go to like throw it to his dad, like not holding back at all. All right, here we go. Last but not least, let's get out. Anytime you say you want to get back in the car and leave the sawgrass, weird roll, forever entwined with the supernatural when you try to escape. From this moment forward. Oh, Lambert, they're waiting for you to pee, buddy. <laughs> Lambert's going to hop out of the car and go over go over to the sawgrass and, and unzip and Step Grumpy. into it, you f little freak. I don't want to see your butt. So I, uh, Okay, look, Betty. I eyes on the prize. The eyes on the prize, champ. If I go in the sawgrass, it'll get all cut up, you know, to the sawgrass. Sawgrass is sharp. Uh, you man. Betty will grab some napkins and stand, like, not not next, next to Lambert, but, you know, enough to be Mom. keeping an eye on him. I don't need you to watch me pee. I'm a I'm I'm almost a teenager. I don't need you to watch me pee. I'm not watching you pee. I'm just keeping an eye Stop on you. Stop watching me pee! I changed 500 of your diapers, young man. I don't wear diapers anymore, though. No, but okay. you did pee on my hand more than once. <laughs> I Lambert think... and Beatrice, please make wits rolls. <laughs> the difficulty no. is trivial. Can I? Uh, All right. So how like, does this work? So that's a mind challenge. You roll a single D6 from mind. I set the difficulty at three. You have to roll the D6. You can uh, spend ability points before you roll or spend weird points after you roll. Okay. Mary is just posting it at the car. Like she like snuck out her oh, stick. I rolled a six. 
What flavor? What's your flavor of Jewel? Must know. They have flavors. Flavors are banned. <laughs> they do have flavors. Uh, red different. wine. We're gonna go with red wine. <laughs> So, like, the fruity tootie flavors are banned, but I think there are other flavors. I don't smoke, so I don't know, but I feel like they just banned, like, the tutti fruity bubblegum kid flavor. Yeah, they did. Um, they, they banned kid flavors. Uh, wow. Um, red wine is definitely not a kid flavor. No. While they're chatting back and forth, and it's getting so fucking annoying, I'm going to just slightly pivot, and instead of throwing it to Dad, I am definitely aiming for Lambert's head. What are you doing? Oh, come on. What's your roll on wits, Lambert? A nine. I also got that would a nine. be not po- uh, Wait, nine would not one. be possible unless you spent ability points. It's a single d six. Oh, I forget. That's not you. Don't add. Uh, yep, that's cult. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, okay, it's I don't. Just a d six by itself, unless you spend points. You have to spend attribute oh. points before the roll or weird after. I rolled a three. Okay. I rolled three, a six. Success. Six success. Okay. Uh, Lambert, you hear it faintly. Beatrice, you hear it clear as day. A small child crying, screaming for help somewhere deep in the grass, along with the rustling sound of someone running in confusion through long grass. It's a genuine cry. Uh, okay, the child, Lambert. The child can't be any more than eight. I'm going to like shove the napkins into Lambert's hands. Okay, Lambert, you stay here, sweetie, and as soon as you're done, you go right back to daddy, okay? Mom, quit looking. Lambert, okay. you pee on your shoes. Take <laughs> <laughs> ah! the napkins and start. Uh, like, and I'm just heading straight towards the sound of the cry. At this, oh, moment, mom, at this moment, at this moment, Lambert leans over to clean his shoes, and the football sails into the grass. Henry, shit, my ball. <laughs> what do you do about that, Henry and Hank? Uh, Hank's just gonna start going. He's like, my motherfucking ball. I need the ball. Henry, uh, you notice that it. Hank and Betty disappear into the sawgrass. What are you going to say, Mary? Uh, so Mary's posting it up at the car, and she, like, sees Betty, like, take off into the grass, and she's just like, what the... Where is she going? He looks over at uh, Mary, like... I don't know. Did she not tell you? I, we heard a... Uh, she really tells me anything. There was, there was a baby sound... Baby. In the baby grass. sound? Yeah. Uh, Mary, like, that? tries to, like, get up on top of the station wagon so she can stand on top of it to look in the field. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I need you to roll two things for me. First, roll wits, the difficulty of three, and then make a weird roll. Dice pool comprised of your mind stat. Uh, Take your total mind and roll that as a number of d6s for the weird roll. Okay, but first I'm making another roll. Wits roll of a single d6. Okay. Ah. Okay, you managed to get on top of the car. All you see is sawgrass and some rocks. Go ahead and make that weird roll. Out of my mind stat? Yep. What are we wanting? Did you get any sixes, first off? Two so far. I only Add two to your personal dice. weird pool immediately. Okay, well, hold on. Let me finish rolling. I have four more dice to roll. <laughs> the rest were ones. Okay. Two. So first, you add two to your personal weird. Second, give me the grand total of the dice. Oh, you didn't tell me that? You should have <laughs> told me that before I rolled my dice again. Well, it was two sixes and some ones. No. There was other numbers in there. It's okay. okay. The difficulty was 10. You were way past it with the two sixes. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Well, and then this next roll was four, five, six. Because uh, I rolled two twos and two ones. So, okay. So at uh, least an then, 18. Yes. Probably 20 something. Uh, one rock in particular stands out to you. It's a strangely shaped one. You can't quite comprehend why. Every time you look at it, you get a little bit of a headache. It's just a rock, though, right? Uh-huh. However, that particular rock gra- draws your attention to it immediately. Everything spins like vertigo for a moment as you absorb weird. You look at that rock and you see brief flashes in your mind of Beatrice on the ground covered in blood. 
Henry standing, staring off into the sawgrass, panting, covered in sweat and grime, holding a scythe. And uh, Lambert, just standing over an unconscious Hank, slowly swaying back and forth, no expression, no facial movements. Then the visions pass. But did I see Betty? <laughs> no. In the field? Just, nope, you failed the witch roll, so you just see grass and rocks, and then that one oh. rock that gave you visions. I don't know where she went, Henry. She's in there somewhere. Oh, God. Beatrice? He starts, like, going towards the edge. Get in the car. He points to um, Hank and uh, Lambert. Get in the car, get in the car, get in the car. Hank Hank left already. Hank went after his ball. Oh, shit. (laughs) Lambert. Lambert, honey. Sweetie, I need you to get in the car, okay? Stay with Aunt Mary. What I'm going to go get your mom. What if a murderer comes up behind a car? We're in what the middle I, of Chuck nowhere. <laughs> it's, it'll be fine. They just walked into the grass over here. I'm just going to find them and bring them back. You know, Statistically right back. speaking, because I'm a kid, technically, and your uh, girl will get killed. I see. <laughs> I, I love your statistics, that. Lambert. He he he's like I'm sorry. He and he looks over at Lambert. Don't say things like that in front of Aunt Mary. Do you understand? It's a very sensitive subject. What am I supposed to say? Get in the car. Get in the car. Why is it a sensitive subject, Henry? I he specifically said that so that you wouldn't hear it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And he adjusts his glasses and he starts wading uh, into the grass to find his. uh, Lambert, do you try to get in the car? Yes. I'm going to need you to roll a number of D6s equal to your soul plus your current weird pool. Can you say it in, like, English, please? <laughs> roll your yep. soul dice. Okay. As well as how many points of weird do you have? One. So you roll four dice. Oh, holy shit. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll roll sixes. Tell me how many sixes do. you get. Don't tell him, Lambert. Keep it a secret. You do you want the truth? Yes. Do you, do you want the fake truth? No. <laughs> real truth. We have no, such you want sights to show you, Lambert. I rolled two. Your sixes. suffering will be legendary. You rolled two Even sixes. Even in solemn veil. I rolled two sixes. Two sixes. Glorious. <laughs> Everyone except Aunt Mary gains one weird, and Lambert, you gain a second weird. Your t- personal weird pool now, Lambert, is three, which makes Henry two, Mary the same as you just were, so two, and both Betty and Hank one. Oh, <clears throat> never mind. You try to get in the car, and you realize it's locked. You look inside. Henry left the keys in there. Shit. Oh, shit. I forgot the damn keys. <laughs> says Henry in the sawgrass. <laughs> so now so, it is just Lambert and Aunt Mary outside the car. They're locked out of. So Aunt Mary, I've got good news and I've got bad news. <laughs> yes, Lambert. The good, the good news, the good news is that I know where the keys are. Uh The bad news is I know where the keys are. Where are the keys, Lambert? They're in the locked car. Which is funny because really in the Midwest we don't really lock anything, so I don't really know why Dad did that. Mary, you should know that it was a nice ride in the car when you're moving and the windows are open, but outside of the car, in really tall grass in the Midwest in fall, <laughs> it is simultaneously really hot because there's endless sun and really cold because it's fall. <laughs> Top of your head is hot, everything else is chilly, and you don't like it. Lambert, don't tell your father this, but I got all the brains from our parents. Actually, you can't really have all the brains because everyone has their own brain. Lambert. Yes. I love you, buddy. Have I ever told you my favorite aunt? I'm your only aunt. I know. (laughs) Is that true, Betty? Do you have sisters? Oh, uh, 
I'm going to roll a D6 on a six. She's an only child. Other than that, it's the number of sisters she's got. Roll a five. Roll a five. (laughs) I rolled a five. Glorious. So I figure like. Nothing but ants. She's got like two sisters and three brothers. So like her brothers are also married. Oh, being the favorite aunt actually matters. Yeah. Uh. I so would have been a smartass instead of the only one. I like the fact that you don't know that Betty has siblings. I would have put it past me to not know that. Yeah. And you know, Lambert, that it's Aunt Aunt Bernice and Aunt Janice. Well, no. If if her brothers are also married, he also has those aunts. Yeah. And Aunt Susie and Aunt Ingrid and Aunt... Hermione. Olga. Hermione. Olga. Olga. Olga's Look. better. <laughs> well, your favorite aunt of the six is Mary. Yeah, the other aunts, they tell me to shut up and stop being a uh, know-it-all. Don't ever let anyone tell you to shut up. And, ever. and Lambert. And I apologize in advance to one of you. And Lambert, the worst aunt, always tries to feed you black licorice. <laughs> it's so good though nasty well carry on you two uh, Lambert are we, we gonna, gonna die <laughs> we're on the side of the road it's not like we're in Michigan in the middle of a blizzard Yet maybe you are in Michigan. It's ambiguous Midwest. Mm. <laughs> so we have we sawgrass. Just... Wait, here? Yes, dear. That's boring. What's boring? Waiting. Waiting is boring. Here, she. I'm gonna say that she. She never leaves anywhere without a purse because that's where her fucking uh jewel was yeah um <laughs> and your flag so she yeah uh so she like gets out like a little like notepad and like a piece of charcoal and she like hands it to lambert she's just like just just draw uh draw oh. the grass draw the car draw a self-portrait you can see your reflection in the car <clears throat> oh okay now you're not waiting you're doing something thanks you're welcome uh, we'll start just scribbling on the essay. Henry, did you find her yet? I need another witch roll, Mary. Difficulty two, single D6. Red, gold, or brown? Gold, of course. Two. Nice. And a taint roll, which is soul. What did you call me? Buddy. Uh, so... That many dice as soul? Uh, nope. For a single D six, <laughs> and then the difficulty is three. Okay. Well, I'm gonna roll brown because you said taint. <laughs> God damn Same it! Time K. <laughs> uh, what am I? So I'm just rolling a single. Yep. Unless you want to spend soul points to add more dice. With a fifty-fifty chance on a single D six. <laughs> Is there, like, a weird pull to pull from, from the scene? There is. It has not been used at all yet. There are still six points in this scene. Cool, I'm still at a point. Eleven. <laughs> so, when you spend a point of weird, you don't get an extra D6, you just get a plus one. But, oh, the well. advantage is, you can spend weird after you see your roll and know you failed. Okay, well, seven, then. Okay. Uh... And I will add. That actually means you lose a point of weird from your personal pool. Oh, so the point I would have gained from stealing a weird, you, I correct. lose. Awesome. And the reason that matters is you watch Lambert draw. And Lambert, you think you're just drawing sawgrass in those rocks. But in the place where the weird rock would be, Aunt Mary, he just scribbles a big black circle like a void. And then standing right next to him over his left shoulder because he's added himself to the picture is this tall, lanky shadow thing with a hand 
on top of his head, but no fingers because they're inside of his head. You're, at first, you're drawn in by the dark shadow thing, but then you snap yourself out of it and say, oh, hell no, grab the drawing, rip it off the notepad, and crumple it up before you even know what you're doing. Me? His hand just keeps moving. Yes. Lambert, this is one of those moments when the thing happens. Lambert? Sweetie? Honey? Now, Betty has told you about these fits, Aunt Mary, and normally just calmly talking to him or maybe giving him a temple massage or offering him something he really enjoys snaps him out of it, but not always. I am not that type of parent. I know. <laughs> you could try any method you want. What, what does not child abuse? Uh, let's see. <laughs> How would I choose to wait try to break Lambert from the fence? Oh goodness gracious. I just like slowly start taking things from him. So like I take the notepad and then I take the charcoal. Lambert, give him, us a go ahead, sorry. Put him back in my purse. Lambert, give us a invocation roll, which is a soul roll. Difficulty is five. So you can spend a point of soul to get extra d6. You can roll the d6, hope for a five, and spend weird if you fail. Or you can just take your chances and accept the failure if you fail. I'm going to go with either the second one or the third one. Roll it. I did. Um. Rolled you, rolled, um... you rolled a two. <laughs> so you can take the failure or you can spend three points of weird and add them to your personal pool. Remember, ten means you lose. You want to just take on the I, uh, uh, no. Um, yeah, no. Lambert is I've British been... now. <clears throat> you take the penalty? Yeah. Check your side. Swear to goodness, if Lambert <laughs> bites off my finger, <laughs> he will no longer be my favorite nephew. Um, oh, crud. Uh, Mm. Okay. He thinks he's dying. We should go into the grass. What? Yes. And and find find everyone. And look for everyone. Find them. Find them in the grass. Mary, make a wits roll. Difficulty two. You'll all become quickly apparent that wits is the perception check of this game. Six. Huh. Six. You immediately notice Lambert's eyes are both a deep, rich emerald shade of green like yours, but richer. Both eyes. Didn't he used to have two different colored yes. eyes? That's correct. Carry on. Do I also notice? Okay, first I have to ask Ambrose. Ambrose, are you not lisping on purpose? Yes. Mm, no, I thought I was. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, I in my thought head you were I doing was. that on purpose. No. <laughs> Carry on then. The lisp is present. Lisp is present. It's just you know actor error. <laughs> no, it's about, that's why I asked. Um, also, with the six, you notice a couple other subtle things. The posture straightens up and becomes more natural and relaxed, almost like an adult, and kind of a smirk, <laughs> like a weird smirk, just the corner of one mouth, of one side of the mouth. 
Sorry, my puppy was making very weird noises. <laughs> this is what puppy he do. doesn't like this moment. Uh, no, I had to put him in, in a kennel for the first time, uh, and he not, not liking it very much. <clears throat> um, Lambert, are, are, you, are you feeling all right? Oh, yes. Quite copacetic. Quite copacetic. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, uh, fine. Um, if you think we should go after your parents, just, it, we should um, hold hands, I guess, so we don't get lost. Oh, yes. We shall hold hands. Yes. <clears throat> we shall. And she offers her hand to him. He will His hand just, is very... Go ahead. Staring off into the grass, reach up exactly where your hand is and grab it. The hand is very, very cold, and for the briefest of second, you, seconds, you thought you felt him caress down the middle of your hand like someone being overly affectionate. You know, like That couldn't have been what happened. He's just holding your hand normally, but it's really cold. Huh. And she'll uh, creeps into where she saw Henry go into the grass. Thereabouts. Now we return to Beatrice. Betty, you head into the grass. Give me a... F- mm, nope. First, give me a logic roll. Difficulty three. Oh, goodness. This would be mine? Yep. Three. Nice. Uh, you're able to follow the sounds of the voice, even though they seem to be moving erratically and very quickly, like the child is running. As you move through the grass, uh, you realize the ground is very uneven, to the point of it being weird. It shouldn't be this bumpy. Uh, and Betty is calling out, uh, and she's deliberately making noise, and she's like, Sweetheart! Sweetheart, I, I can help you, but you got to stop moving, okay? Just ca- just stop and call it where you are, and I'll come to you, okay? Now roll invocation difficulty six. Oh, what is an invocation roll? Soul. Okay. Something is using magic against you. Oh, God. All right, I rolled another three. Would you like to keep the failure or spend a lot of weird... <laughs> Oh, God. None has um, still been used from this scene. No, no, one point was used from this scene. There are five. Okay, so if I spend those weird, that comes to me, right? Yep. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> I like it. Uh, for a moment, the voice changes and becomes Lambert's. And that terrifies you. But then, like, something weird happens to all the sound around you. Like, sound just stops for a minute and then restarts, and it's a different child again. And that really weirds you out. Roll foreboding, difficulty three. That's also soul. Okay. Oh, that's a six. Nope, fuck that creepy kid. This scene is yours. (laughs) Whatever that is, I ain't chasing it no more. (laughs) Uh... Yeah, so she probably decides based on her um, uh, outdoor adventures as a girl. Like, oh, sometimes dying rabbits sound like screaming babies. Mm. And that's the justification she makes in her in her head. She's like, oh, my God, like a fox got a rabbit and now I'm in the tall grass. Um, but she heard her son. She heard Lambert, and so she starts calling out, Lambert! Lambert, are you in the grass, honey? Where are you? You retain the presence of mind by succeeding on the foreboding roll to be able to head back the exact way you came, if you choose. Uh, she will until she hears one of her other children, or thinks she hears one of her other children, then she'll go in that direction. Fourteen minutes pass. It only took you four minutes to get this far. You're still in the tall grass. You know you went the right way. Uh, all right. So, she will stop. 
try and reorient herself, which is going to be difficult in the very tall grass. Um, and just, again, keep talking, calling out, hello, hello, can anyone hear me? Hank? Henry? Mary? Anyone? Hello? Now we move to Henry. <laughs> Henry, you got your side message? Yep. Okay. You've headed into the grass. You're looking for the football, yes? Um, yeah, yeah I'm looking for Betty. Did you mean I'm Hank? Looking for Hank and no, I mean Henry. Football. Sorry. Henry went in after Hank. That's right. You're looking for Hank. Hank's looking for the football. Yes. So, Henry, roll wits. Okay. Uh, what am I looking Difficulty for? Th Difficulty three. Difficulty three. I got a five. Nice. Uh, you follow the exact path you saw your son take. There's no way he got more than a minute or two ahead of you. You travel for 10 minutes and you trip. And I need you to make a uh, obstruction roll, which is body at difficulty of two. Okay. Five again. <laughs> you managed to not stumble and twist your ankle. It's the football. Oh, <laughs> here it is. Hey, Junior, slow down. Jeez, what the you grab the football? Yeah. Pick it's up wrapped the football. in vines, and the vines are holding it down. What the dickens? Oh, At that geez. moment, Betty, as you're calling out, Hank, Lambert, Henry, you hear your husband from your right very clearly say, what the dickens? And that way he does. Henry. You hear your wife to your left. Uh, Beatrice? I... Honey, where, where, where? Towards the voice. I'm right here. I just found Hank's. I, I just found Junior's football over here. He must have taken off. I, I can't keep up with this kid. Henry, roll obstruction again. Difficulty three. Beatrice, roll pursuit. Difficulty three. Those are both body. Fuck, I rolled a one. Oh, shit. Three. Wow. I'm getting either a three or a six on this dice. Beatrice, you actually managed to find your way to Henry, even though it's almost like the grass is resisting you. Henry, you heard her from the left, but she comes from your right, and you're not ready for it, and you trip all over each other. Oh. <laughs> you failed, but you've rolled a one, correct? No. Yeah. I'm it sorry, I'm sorry. I'm klutz. <laughs> I need Henry and Beatrice to both roll weird rolls, which in this case is just your current weird pool. If you have no weird, roll 1d6. All right, that so my weird point. is four, so I'm rolling four dice. That is correct. Okay. There is no target number. Highest result, finger quote, wins. I got a four and a one. <laughs> Six or five. Got it. I got a 14. Beatrice, huh? when you get all tangled up in each other, you go down hard and you twist your ankle. Lose one body point. Roll play accordingly. Carry on with the scene now that you found each other. Oh, oh, ouch, ouch, oh, my, my foot, sweetie, oh, my foot. Uh, oh, I'm so oh. sorry, honey. You know, I'm so clumsy. And I really am clumsy. It's one of my facets. So I, I, help her, I help pick her up. And are you, let, me, let me take a look at your leg. Let me take a look at your Hold still, hold still. It is rapidly swelling. Oh, shit. It's definitely it twisted. Oh. Uh, can I, you walk? Um, oh. Me, me, oh, no. No, I can't. Oh, oh goodness! Here, here, um, he wraps his her arm around his shoulder and like makes sure to grab the football with the other hand. It's like I think he went this way. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was so silly. I thought I heard a child, but it was just a fox with a rabbit. I need you both to roll wits difficulty two. <laughs> Four. Got a two. The football visibly moves off into the grass pulled by the grass and the vines whoa whoa you did both you see to that? roll foreboding which is a soul roll difficulty four. Oh. uh i still have two points of weird i could use that if i need to right you don't you, you don't spend your personal weird you spend from the scene pool which has uh two points left two points. you have okay, two and my... so does the scene in this case <laughs> I'll uh, use five. those two points, though, because I have a two. I roll a two. <laughs> so using those two points would take you to a four. So you both succeed. 
And now your personal Weird Henry is four. Oh, shit. Because you, <laughs> you took two from the pool. It also means the scene pool is drained for the duration of the scene. There is no more weird. Uh, okay. You were both able to follow the football if you want, even though it terrified you. Role play accordingly. Did you, you saw that, right? That thing jumped right out of my hands. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, oh, goodness. It's Hank. Hank is playing one of his pranks. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Hank, <laughs> Hank Junior? isn't funny. And she'll start hobbling after the football. All right, big guy, come on out. We got to get back we, to the car. We switch the scene to Hank. Hank, you go into the tall grass after that football. Ball. Need you to roll logic. Difficulty three. <laughs> you got uh, this, buddy. <laughs> this is just this flat uh, mind roll, yeah? Yep. <laughs> nice. You immediately get lost. Stupid ball. Where's the ball? I need the stupid ball. Goddamn ball. You wander for 15 <laughs> minutes before you even notice you were lost. You don't know where you are, where you're oh, going. shit. Stupid fucking grass. We're boating. Difficulty three. The grass. <laughs> I say that all the time too, Hank. I say that all the time too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you realize you're lost and immediately panic. Role play accordingly. Fuck, stupid Christ. Too fucking tall. I'm tall. I should see over this. And he just starts like smooshing past, like probably battering his arms a little as he's like trying to like run. Like now he's like starting to panic and feel closed in. Like he's used to always being able to see things. He's tall. He's never been crowded in most places. He's a big guy. And he's just running, like starting to run, really run as an athlete and just swiping his arms through the grass to try and just like push and make sight of something other than grass. Make a weird roll. Equal to your current weird pool. Three. Three. Excellent. Okay. As you sprint through the glass, gr glass, as you sprint through the grass, I need you to roll pursuit. Difficulty four. Is there, so is this a new scene? Nope. Okay. I get a three. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> this uh, child deserves us all. You sprint through the grass and suddenly you see her broken, bloody, crushed, just standing there in the grass, pointing at you, accusingly. No, no. And he just immediately like turns left, keeps going. She gives chase and is catching up to you because you failed that pursuit roll. Roll foreboding, difficulty six. Uh, fuck. Uh, I'm gonna spend a point. <laughs> of okay, two d six. Uh, eight. Hmm. Well spent point. All right. You sprint harder than you've ever sprinted until you don't get cramps in your side. You get fucking <laughs> splinters. <laughs> She's not behind you anymore. You have no idea where you are, or how long you've been running. It's actually it's a little darker in the sky. Shit. Stupid fucking Lambert. <laughs> this did, did all start with Lambert having to go potty. <laughs> Just can't fucking pee in a bottle like a real man. As you're stopping and thinking, you hear humming. Small child humming a song. Lambert, is that you, you little shit? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Lambert? Uh, I turn around to the voice. All right, roll wits. Difficulty two. Cool, 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 cool. I don't know who Lambert Six. is. Who are Six. you? Six. You follow the voice. I've been lost here for so long. Oh, oh, well, you're the fucking. Uh, are you why my mom ran into the grass? Did she like hear you? Are you like lost, little dude? You have a mom. I lost I mine. I had a mom when I came into the grass. I don't anymore. You pop out into a little clearing the kids made by smushing the grass down. Oh. He's just sitting there. It's the key. He's just covered in dirt and grime and grass, sweat, stickiness. Oh, shit. You're like Residue. Really dirty. You're my mom. Clothes are, clothes are ripped. Looks like he's been here a while. 
ema- emaciated. Oh, uh, he's oh. sitting there. Trigger warning for animals. With a dead rabbit. Like long dead, not freshly dead. The kid did not kill the rabbit. Okay. Um, the rabbit is uh, like died of natural causes and it's just a rabbit corpse like the kid found it. Okay. okay. And he's doing something to it. He's wrapping grass around it in a specific pattern. And he's got a little divot cut out of the dirt. A uh, little dude. Uh, my mom says don't play with dead things. Uh, also, you look dirty and hungry. And so I think he like reaches into like his pocket of his like Letterman and pulls out like a granola bar and like some hand, like a little hand sanitizer. His mom probably makes him carry around. Nice. Um, and he's like, here, eat, eat this. Do you, you got a name, little bro? And as he like squeezes some into the kid's hand before he can like eat the granola bar. I, I, he's like a footballer, so I imagine he's got like just lots of snacks on him. But the grass doesn't move dead things; only living things. That's he turns. Creepy. He turns to look at you. Takes the granola bar. And his eyes are just hollowed out. I don't mean literally. I mean you know that dead ten thousand mile stare, like a war veteran. But it's a kid, all of eight. Okay. All right. Um, Grass only takes you. living things. If Grass I quit only. the dead things, I don't get lost anymore. That's fucking creepy ass shit. Um. Okay, uh, eat the granola bar, little dude. Do you have a name? Blank stare for a minute like he can't remember. Tommy. Okay. Tommy. Cool, Tommy. All right. This grass is tall shit, but I have an idea. Why don't you eat the granola bar, and then I'm going to give you the coolest little dude thing ever, which is you're going to get a shoulder eyed and tell me what you see. If you put me over the grass, I'll just see the big rock. That's where Daddy was going. There is a big rock. Well, that's great. We should we should probably meet up with your Daddy. Uh, I mean, then maybe we can, or or maybe you'll see like my mom. Is she wandering? The dead things tell me you? not to go to the rock. Kid, when all did of you... the dead things, like the bunny, and mommy. Uh, mm, um. Uh. Um, uh, Make a foreboding roll, difficulty yeah, three. He, he does not know how the fuck to deal with this. Uh, foreboding is spirit or soul, right? Uh, soul, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's a four. Okay. <laughs> you don't immediately run away in terror. Yeah. Um. Listen, little dude, I'm sure, like, you thought you saw certain things. You're probably, like, super, like, dehydrated and hungry. And, like, you probably haven't slept well and you're, like, dirty and shit. So like I don't I don't fucking know if you're like can mom bend you I shouldn't say that uh and like he like kneels down to get on the level just here eat the, eat the granola bar dude and uh, he like pull like a Gatorade bottle out like have a couple sips and just breathe for me and then we'll okay so like don't the rock is bad rock is bad that's what the dead things tell me what else do they tell you. That I live here now, so do you. No, I I, I live on 56 Helga Lane. Go Paladins. Oh, yeah, you, you fan little man? You know, like James K. Polk Paladins? That's what you said last time. I We, we just met, little dude. <laughs> that's, that's, that's funny, we just met. That's, that's cute. Yes. He like, reaches a hand out to ruffle his hair. Like. This is the first time we meet, yes. He just, like, shoves the Gatorade a little closer to me and <laughs> shuts his mouth and drink. Chugs it. Like, adult chugs it. Oh, shit. It's just gone. Okay, okay. He belches loudly and says, yes, the grass doesn't move dead things. Forward, backwards, up, down, to then, to later, to now. Okay. We're going to try that fun shoulder thing now. And he's going to, like, reach to, like, take the kid gently into the armpits. And see if you see an adult. Um, this is, he like describes his mom a bit, like you know, she's kind of tall, sort of like she's got like dark brown. Looks like me. Like as you're lifting him, before you even get him on your shoulders, before he could see over the grass, the rock is that way. I'm not asking about the rock yet. Do you see anything else? No. 
You just don't... the rock and the church. There's a church. Yeah, outside the grass. It doesn't let me out, though. The church doesn't let you out? The... Doesn't let you out, either. Just your mommy and your daddy and your aunt. Wait, how do you know that my aunt's here? Or my dad? You told me last time. We just met, Tommy. You're not a dead thing yet. The grass is going to move you back. I feel like at this point, I like... Uh, trigger warning some child things. I'm going to like shake him a little and be like, stop <laughs> saying shit. That doesn't he does not even sense. react to that. Shit. Fuck. I'm sorry. Fuck. Sorry, Tommy. Um, fuck. Uh, okay. Listen, um, you don't like the rock, so I don't want to take you to the rock. Cause that, that seems kind of gross and weird. Uh, what way can we go? Where should we go? It doesn't matter. All right. Let's, it's, it's gotta be fucking in. Like he like tries to look at like, up to see if you can see like the sun to like attempt to like north south as if that means anything he feels like it might he's not roll bright. taint difficulty six i mean uh, we definitely would have enrolled our children in outdoor adventures what is yes. taint again? soul is it single dice roll soul or the whole pool single okay it's just a challenge roll oh, okay six it's nice You see the sun visibly move. Okay, yeah. All right, so if we want to go north, we have to go this way. Come on. To and the I east. Think, to the east. Okay. Wait. Does that, does that not make sense? I feel like that does not make sense. I don't know. Does it? Roll logic. Difficulty three. Jesus. <laughs> okay, six. It rises in the east. That means it's going yeah. backwards. It's like you're going back. That's not how that works. I've gotten up early enough many times in practice to know that's not how that works. The kid is no longer on your shoulders. Roll foreboding. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, foreboding is... Soul, Soul again. again. Okay. Difficulty three. Three! You do not, once again, succumb to the terror. You can roleplay how you want. So the kid's not on my shoulder. Is he just straight up gone? Yeah. Fuck. Also... You glance down as the sun slowly moves to the east because it's slowing down like it's coming to a stop. Mm -hmm. And you see that where the kid was sitting, the grass slowly resumes its natural position like it's reversing. Where he smushed it down. Fuck. That's... I don't like that. That shit's weird. Um, death, don't move. Uh, he's going to try and pick up, like, the rabbit that's been, like, woven into these um, grass. Rabbit isn't there either. Ah, oh, fuck. Because that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Shit. Um, okay, there's nothing here. Uh, fuck. What did that thing... If, fuck. If you don't move, but I'm not going to see here. That's fucking boring. Um, you hear a noise from somewhere south of you. What kind of noise? A car comes to a stop. Oh, hey! Hey! And he's going to try and like go towards the, the car. Car doors open and close. You hear your dad talking to you about throwing the football and Lambert talking about having to pee. Didn't you fucking pee already? You, you hear you yourself. Your bladder... Roll for boating difficulty nine. Okay, so I have to spend a point. It's still the same scene, so I can't do that. Okay. You can spend soul or accept failure. Yeah, spend soul or accept failure. So we're going to spend a point of soul. But... That's a nice roll. Uh, that's a 10. Nice. You, re you maintain your self-awareness. You are panicking, but you do not lose a point of soul. That's... Okay. Um... Dad? You go to say dad, and I need you to roll threat. Difficulty, five. Okay, that's body. Tyler, you're muted. Something tackles you from behind, hits you in the back of the knees. Doesn't take you down, though. 
Ow, fuck. I try and, like, grab on and turn whatever this thing is. It's the little kid. Oh, hey. Shit, Tommy. Stop talking. Why am I not talking? If you shout, they'll come in the grass. We don't want to... Okay, I... Okay, okay, little dude, and he'll shut up and, like, just hold the kid. Because it can't be your fault. Help! You hear Betty say, you stay here, Lambert. I gotta go see what that is. Wait, what do you mean to keep... Wait, why did you yell then? Wait, no, I don't want the... Uh, like, I think as he goes to do help, I don't know if I can get this off before I hand it out. I want to cover his mouth. Because, like, I don't want him to yell and get us in here. Sure. Roll obstruction. Or if you're going to try to talk him out of it, roll pressure. I don't care which. Oh, no, physical. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend Difficulty. Difficulty two, since it's physical for you. Oh. And this kid is like eight. I'm not going to spend that dice. With Five. Okay. Uh, you tackle that kid with like a professional wrestling move. And you think to yourself, coach taught me well, go paladins. And you hear yourself say it out loud to the kid before you said it to the kid. Oh. At that point, you have no choice. You lose a point of soul. It's too much. Yeah. And then Betty hears the kid, just like before, scream for help and then suddenly get muffled and quiet. We move the scene to Mary and Lambert. You enter the grass holding hands. My brain hurts already. <laughs> you are in the grass. It immediately swallows you. At least that's what it feels like. Uh, it keeps a pretty tight grip on Lambert's hand. Um, she doesn't like being outside. She's a city girl. Um, she likes her high rises and her subways. Um, she like starts making her way through the grass, like pushing it aside um, to like make room for like Lambert behind her. So like it doesn't like smack him in the face. Um, and then she, I guess, I just, I call out, like, Henry, Betty, are you in here? I mean, of course you're in here, but <laughs> where are you? It's fine. They won't be able to hear you anyway. What? One moment. The grass. Grass knows what, Lambert? The grass knows everything. I feel like I sent you too many books when you were younger that might have set things in motion. One moment. Okay. Sure. I'm telling other people to deal with things that... What? <laughs> the GM... Deal with things the GM is not privy to, but other people are. I'm telling them to deal with it as appropriate to this scene. I know the nature of the secrets I told you not to share, but I don't know the results necessarily you agreed on, so I'm telling the people who do know the results to handle it accordingly for me for this scene. Okay. The grass knows things, and I also know things. What do you mean? about you i know do you know that i'm a really bad sister and i know you know what buddy i know 
Okay, I think you've watched a few too many scary movies after bedtime with your brother without your mom knowing. So ah uh, yes, moving pictures. Yes, moving pictures. Well, that's happening. I need uh, <laughs> Lambert to roll logic difficulty two and Mary to roll wits difficulty six. Why? See if you notice what Lambert's been doing while he's intentionally freaking Mary out. Five. Okay. Did you say five? <laughs> he did, yes. Uh, what was my difficulty? Six. Five, sorry, it was five. Okay. What was mine again? <laughs> Two. Oh, Two. sweet. I got I got a five. Nice. Uh, and just because I had to go do the puppy, is our weird pool for this scene kaput? Yes. Okay. Because this is all Betty, still scene Betty, one. Betty murdered us. She stole all of her points. <laughs> uh, no, Eric took the last two. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I'm, I will take responsibility for part, but not all. Um, you notice that Lambert's trying to freak you out and trying to distract you from the fact that he's going somewhere very specific. I don't know where, but he knows where he's going. and He's dragging you along. I was in front. How can he drag me? Exactly. That's why you noticed <laughs> uh, she like digs her heel in and stops like a stubborn mule <laughs> handle this how you want Lambert but you're going to that rock I will let go of your hand no you won't and I will go to the rock no you won't we must go to the rock no we don't what yes no yes no, that rock is creepy and I have bad feelings and I know these things. Beatrice and Henry are at the rock. No, they're, no. Beatrice and Henry are at the rock. They're your mom and dad, stop calling them Beatrice and Henry. Hank is not at the rock. Beatrice and Henry are at the rock. Stop calling them Beatrice and Henry, Lambert. They're Beatrice and Dad are at the rock. Beatrice is your mom. Henry is your dad. Beatrice and Henry are at the rock. We must go to the rock. You are not All right. too old for me to put you over my shoulder. Opposed pressure rolls, full mind pools each. <laughs> Highest result wins. We'll full see who, mind pools? Yeah, we'll see who's more stubborn in a social face off. Uh, I just want you to know that one of my things that I wrote down is stubborn. You may have an extra a, dice. I rolled a five. How, how many much mind do you have? It's full mind. Yeah, oh, roll. all your mind. Shit. Dice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought you like mind. six mind. I do, I do. I need to get another die. Okay, so do I add these all up? It was muted, sorry. Yep, highest total okay. wins. Got to do math. Um, what do, do sixes do anything in this scenario? Uh, count how many total sixes you get, but it doesn't change the result of the roll. That's for both of you. Okay. I have two sixes that I rolled. Okay. I got 20 total. Any sixes? No. Okay. I rolled 31. And with two sixes. Okay. And two sixes. Uh... Roll taint difficulty six with two extra dice, so it's three d six for Aunt Mary. What do I? Nothing. Okay. Uh, Mary Jacqueline, the rock 13. speaks to us. You just have to listen. I rolled thirteen with another six, if it matters. What are we doing in the grass? 
Oh, we were supposed to stay at the car. What were we doing in the grass? I was drawing something. What did you do with my drawing? I was going to play tic-tac-toe and I was going to win. I grab his face and I look at him. It's warm. It's not cold anymore. And his eyes? Heterochromic. There's my boy. Yeah, I've been here the whole time, I think. Uh, maybe. Let's, um, look for your mom and dad, Lambert. They both ran into the grass. And, and now we're in the grass. Yeah, it wasn't our, our, our uh, brightest moment, but um, here we are, so. You hear rustling in the grass ahead of you and stumbling into the little area you're in. There's a man. 5'11". Stranger danger! <laughs> uh, he, like, pushes Lambert behind her. 140 pounds, clearly emaciated, ripped clothes, covered in flax, hair's messed up, smells like he's been here a couple days. Uh, make a wits roll, Mary. Difficulty three. Four. Holding a knife. Uh, like, uh, not like a kitchen knife, not like a, like, like a K bar, like a military knife. He just looks at you, eyes slightly crazed, and says, have you seen my son, Tommy? No, sir. Are you going to murder us? Are you a murderer? Are you a serial killer like Jeffrey Dahmer? Lambert, shut your mouth. I have to find Tommy. Like, she, like, pulls Lambert behind her and, like, puts her purse in front of her as, like, well, maybe if he stabs me, he'll stab my purse first and it won't hurt as bad. Uh what do you Tommy? mean he looks over his left shoulder, nothing there. What do you mean the boy shouldn't be the boy? Where's Tommy? I don't know who Tommy is, sir. Maybe he killed Tommy. I'd never kill my old son. Your own son or your old son? What did I just say? Own? Own son. That's not the GM. That's what he says. Uh huh. <laughs> Sir, I, I would just um, keep looking. Your son isn't here. Is he my old son or is this now? Okay. Well, he has to be here. You have to help me look. I don't have to help you do anything. You ever want to get out of here? Are you going to eat us? You look hungry. No, I am. No, I'm not going to eat you. Why would you eat people? I know the way out, but you have to help me find Tommy first. I can get us to the church. The way out of the field? Like, it's a field, sir. It's great. You can just turn around and walk out. Can you? Yeah, that's yeah. how grass works. Clearly you haven't tried yet, or you forgot. I'm looking for my brother. Like, he wandered in here after his freaking, after his wife and boy. And I'm looking for my son. Maybe we can help each other. No, I'm not interested. You're well, scary, time, mister. Next time you find me, remember, I can help you find the church if you help me find Tommy. And he just steps back into the grass and it closes around him. And that's when all of you, except for Hank, hear church bells start tolling in the distance somewhere. That's where we pause until next week. <laughs> I've decided that in my purse... I need a spare pair of socks so I can <laughs> shove them in Lambert's mouth. <laughs> so definitely, it's, it's not a pair of it's definitely not a pair of socks. You do have a pair of, of tights though, in case you need to like go somewhere and do something. True. Fair Wait, tight. don't you have duct tape in there? Don't tempt me, child. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as the sun is moving properly across the sky, night will close in around us, and Solemn Vale will sleep, dragging you all into its nightmares. Until next week. We thank you for joining us tonight for session one of our new Solemn Bale arc of stories. We'll see how many people make it through session two intact. We're off to a good start. 
As for other terrifying tales and awesome adventures you can enjoy with Vorpal Tales, right now on Mondays we are playing Dune once again. What's the title of this story, Eric? Instruments of Canley. Brilliant. Followed by this show, of course, in the evenings. On Tuesdays, we begin Mecha Hack this week. On Wednesdays, we are playing The One Ring. On Thursdays, uh, we're on break because it's th- Thanksgiving. Nothing on Thursday this week. Uh, next week, we return to the final session of Ambrose Changeling Four Shot and Pathfinder. On Fridays, we are playing Masks of Nyarlathotep, followed by Draco Genesis in 5th edition. On Saturdays, uh, we are beginning Warhammer 40k. Let's see how many Imperial Guardsmen survive. Hint, probably none. Followed by SCP the RPG finally returning this Saturday. What a miracle. And on Sunday, Plan Jaya, the new Kickstarter by uh, Atlas Games, who bring you Unknown Armies. Followed by Cult Divinity Lost as we approach the end game of that tale. Will the house consume them all or has it already? And soon, beginning in December, brand new show, Tuesdays, 5 p.m., Come watch Steve run Twilight 2000, which is Red Dawn, the RPG. Come check it out. Players, let the viewers know the next show they can catch you in and anything else cool you do online outside of our show before next week. Beginning again with Eric. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eric uh, at Modern Recluse Online, and uh, tonight I played Henry, uh, the dad. And uh, you can catch me here next Monday for Dune. Next, Ambrose. <sighs> okay, hey everybody. I am Ambrose. I've enjoyed playing Lambert Jornson for you, the twelve-year-old know-it-all, sassy pants. Uh, you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, and you can find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. The end. Savannah. Hi, I am Savannah. Uh, you can find me online at Miss Smith Emo Fox. Uh, tonight I played Mary Jacqueline Bjornson, uh, Aunt Mary, uh, to these two lovely little champs. Um, and uh, you would normally find me on Thursday round two for Pathfinder, but we are off this week due to the holiday, as you just said. Um, Saturday round two, we are playing SCP. We are. Finally, after our long hiatus due to me being Tyler traveling and coming to see me in California. Um, (laughs) uh, And then you can find me Sunday round dose uh, for Cult Divinity Lost. And you can find me Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific on my own uh, Twitch channel, uh, playing Stardew Valley with Oh Hello Mare, a fellow Purple Tales cutie pie. Cottage wife. And she's also my wife. My cottage wife. Willing to unmute again. Kay, you're next. Hi, I'm Kay. You can find me at Puppy Lover12398 on Twitter or trolling around the Carrion Comfort, Vorpal Tales, or Monster Hearts Discord servers. Uh, you can catch me here also on Saturday for the final revival of uh, bringing back SCP. I'm about to throw some pheromones all over some fish people. It's going to go fucking great. Yeah. No. Um, and that's it for now, but some shenanigans in the work. We shall see. Oh, oh and uh, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. Happy fun times. We're going to deal with Changing the Lost uh, in Ambrose's wonderful game, and it's not going to be terrible. Woo-hoo. And last but not least for this week, Rachel. Hello. My name is Rachel. You can find me at Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. As far as the next time you will find me, Let's see, this week I am off because it is the holidays, but I will be here on Black Friday because fuck late stage capitalism, I'm going to be running Masks of Nyarlath Hotep. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. We are reaching uh, the climax of the New York chapter, so it's going to be Black Wind Black Friday. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, and then I will be back here the Thursday after Thanksgiving for Ambrose's three shot. Uh, after which I get to uh, occupy that time slot 
with Rebellion, a Vampire the Requiem Chronicle, all brewed all the time. It's going to be amazing. Uh, and then you can also find me uh, again back here Saturday nights, not, not Saturday nights, Sunday nights, playing Cult. Uh, and then here on Mondays in the time slot before this one, I'm going to play Dune. I get Dune. I get Eric's Dune game back. I get to bring Daphne back. It's so much fun. That just started. I can't, I can't wait to dive into that story. Excellent. And of course, hopefully next week we will have the return of Aaron. Let's see who stumbles out of the grass to join your wayward lost group. But now for the ride or die viewers, it's vote time. As previously mentioned, viewer votes. Yours are worth something cool that we'll have posted. <laughs> and players, your votes for each other are worth one of three things. Avoid death, avoid scratching out an ability score, or force any one roll on any other player, good or bad, your choice at any time. In the newly pinned order, begin. Um, I feel like uh, every week I would vote for Ambrose, and especially this week because uh, that little kid uh, thing, like that really creepy kid thing you did was really freaking freaky <laughs> but uh uh i would be remiss uh, not to mention that awesomeness but i i'll have to give it to uh, uh k for the uh <laughs> the awesome portrayal of hank the jock and like the non-stop of what the fuck is going on in the in the grass was, was a lot of fun it was very entertaining thank you well that'd be my turn i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to vote for Savannah for having to put up with me being creepy. You're getting on my last nerves, kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. And for keep, you know, still talking to the possible killer dude who is supposedly looking for his son. Yeah. I mean, I, I, what choice do I have? I'm alone in in a field with this dude. Like... I, I can't just back up. He's also, you know, family and you love him. Right. Oh, that means it's me. Hi. Um, goodness. Um, I am going to vote for Rachel this week. I very much enjoyed seeing uh, Rachel in like a motherly role. And it was, since I've known Rachel for so long, um, like I could instantly like hear like the tonal shift in her voice. And I'm just like, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> so thank you. I, I'm essentially like, asking myself what my mom would do because I realized I sort of inadvertently made her. Like she didn't get married out of high school, but she got married really, really young. And like, uh went to community college when i was a kid and like mm -hmm. so most of it is like what would my character do what would my own mom do thank you you're welcome okay i think that's me next uh i this was kind of hard but i think i'm gonna go with eric um, there's just something very delightful about like just like the the sort of like junior like and just like all like the the, the way you re you really fell into that trope like face first as it went like ah oh, he's playing a prank on us ah oh, junior come on like and just you you really like oh let's toss the ball you just you had like this perfect attitude in my mind of like yeah like a dad a guy who was going somewhere got way late and now he's like put all of his hopes onto his kids and is just mm. but also like goofing around seeing his wife like oh let me see your ankle like. It's, I'm clumsy. It was just very fitting, and it felt really great. Thank you, thank you. I have no idea who to vote for. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to give my vote to Ambrose because, yeah, I I really liked how you're playing Lambert, and uh, you've got some terrible secrets. And there will be chaos when we understand all of them. It was scary as fuck. <laughs> That's a yeah, I was really kids close. in this story. I like it. I was really close between Lambert and Henry for like who I wanted to pick, and it was so good. It was, but also like 
the creepy kid, but also just like the obnoxious little brother you had just like very nailed down, like precocious 12 year old who needs to shut the fuck up. Like, as always, excellent being excellent to each other. And on that note, we leave you to your solemn nightmares until next week when we will see you again in the tall grass. Good night. Good night. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Eat your Wash vegetables. Your Wash your hands. Get your COVID booster shots. Yeah, have you done your homework yet? You need to go do your homework. <laughs> homework before video games, okay? Not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my, my house...